Comments coming down the hallway, so you will have quorum when you get to serve. Okay, so we're just waiting for quorum. It should be momentary, so please hold on. I'm just waiting to see who's an attendee. Let yeah. me see. Oh, oh um, I thought we just one second while we we're just checking who's an attendee. Okay, that's great. Okay. Um Mark, I'm just about to log on. Do you want to make me a co-host? That would be great. That's right. Okay. He wants okay. It does. I don't know why that is. That's something that's a vestige from COVID. Merging AI. Okay. Okay. It's. Um, uh, hold on. Give us a, give us one more minute while we do a little more technical. Take care of a couple technical details, then we can call the meeting to order. Okay, I'm on it. Can I have my picture on there? Okay. The real target. <laughs> that sounds like some. That sounds like some social media thing. Susan, can you just take the attendance sheet and keep track? Like Valerie just hopped on, so we want to be sure. Um, okay. She's in Anita's not here, David's not here, Bo's not here, Frederica's not here. But she's absent with a notice. Can you? Yes, but I just mean on the side. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But down below, you have to add Valerie under I'll be back. four members. We're right here. Valerie on. Okay. on. Rosa. She's on the phone. This will be done. Valerie. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, welcome to the June 12th meeting of the CB Manhattan CB2 Land Use and Housing. Committee meeting. We're calling to order at six thirty. I need it. I just got you here. Um, okay. We'll go around and introduce the committee members. My name is Katie Bordenaro. I'm co-chair. I'll go to the screen to Eugene to say hello, please. Hi, Katie. Um, my name is Eugene Yu. I'm co-chair of Land Use as well. Great. And then I'll go around the room here. Anita Brand, board member. Carter Booth, board member. Donna Rafferty, board member, committee member. Susan Wittenberg, committee member. Bella Fitzgerald, committee member. We have other board members in the room and on Zoom, so welcome to them as well. And we do have some attendees. There are, we have uh, three items on the agenda. And the first is the public hearing. Um, it's about 503 Broadway. I don't think it'll take us very long, but I, uh, so I thought we should start with that because other things will take longer. Um, 503 Broadway, for those of, of you who know, is where the Zara store is. And there's a big, um, there's a, a lot of discussion in this committee and approvals in 2019. And one of the uh, problems that we were addressing were, issues on Mercer Street, both deliveries and disturbance of the neighbors. Um, the special permit is about uh, their DOB, um, their DOB permits, but this is one chance for us to say something about uh, some of the other issues. And they seem to have cleaned up their delivery act, but there, we have had some complaints about the um, employees uh, using Mercer Street as a break area. So there still are some plays. So this might be an opportunity to just uh, comment on that because it's coming officially before us. Um, I believe, um, is there, uh, is there any I, I don't discussion? 
What is there anybody presenting this to us? Uh, well, there are, the, the Pete Davies is going to talk from. No, but I mean, from them. The yeah. applicant. Because it's difficult to understand, but sorry, the full context. It, it's very difficult to understand. But do you remember the uh, applicant? I, I remember, but I. Yeah, why aren't you here? From what I can tell, first of all, I'll tell you the first thing that happened. The notice was sent to community board one instead of community board two. So it was floating around in the ether for a long time, for a while. And I think that there's a 45 day period to comment. I, I don't really see any comment on the merits. I think the only thing is to try to see if there's any point possibility of talking about some of the neighbor's issues. Is this, is this the one moment we could do that? Do we want to hear from the neighbors first? Before? I think it would be helpful. I think I see Pete Davies is on the um, is is here, and he could perhaps uh, speak to the issues that the, the community is having, uh, and the issues that have been resolved. Can you elevate him, please? Sure. Thank you. Can't hear you, Pete. Pete, we can't hear you, but that may be. Us? Uh, Give us a minute. I'm sorry. Oh, we can hear you now. Okay, you just you're you, uh, you, we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay, so I don't have a clue as to why CB2 is hearing this. <laughs> I, well, I mean, you know, the fact that the applicant is not here is crazy. But yes, they changed up their um, uh, delivery practices, but they are not. Um, from what I hear from people on Mercer Street, the employer, Zara, uh, is not communicating as well to the employees that they please do not sit on the neighbor's stoops and smoke and, and eat. Um, you know, this is not only their place of residence, those stoops are the entry to their retail and business tenants on the ground floor. So apparently Zara doesn't want their employees sitting on their stairs. So they go across the street and sit on other people's stairs. I don't, you know, I, I don't know what to say about that. That's the situation. They're not here. So how are you gonna get them to do anything? It's crazy. Um, the situation, while you've got me here, uh, with this request for the special permit, Extension, uh, yes. Extension for what? Uh, to complete the work on the building uh, plan and to complete the uh, C of O, if I, as I recall. Okay, so they were granted this five years ago, and they've still failed to, I guess, comply with what they had to do. Yes. Uh, whether or not that's coming from city planning or DOB or some other agency, we don't know because they're not here. Um, I don't see how the committee can say yes to this request with the lack of knowledge that the, the that we have. It's it's not a um, it, because this is not about deliveries and this, that, and the other. This is about compliance with a regulation or the law that apparently they failed to comply with. And so they've been sent back to get more time so they can go comply with what they said they do five years. Thank and you, Pete. We, I think they One it. final point. This is not the only special permit, retail special permit along Broadway or elsewhere in CB2. So um, who knows what kind of precedent we're setting if we say, oh, sure, no big deal. Um, we don't understand it, but why not? Uh, I think that's dangerous way to move. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Uh, the council member has just arrived, but I should let uh, Council Member Marte and Honor know where we are in the discussion. Oh, because it's in their district. Yes, Thank you. 
Good evening. Good evening. Um, why don't you come sit here so we don't have to twist around? Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, we're just talking about 503 Broadway, which has has a special permit and needs a three month extension. Um, they sent their paperwork to CB1, who eventually sent it to us, realized it wasn't theirs. We haven't really been involved since the beginning, but um, this is an opportunity. Sorry, did you say a three month extension? Three year. Oh, a three, three year. year. Sorry, three okay. years. But thank you, Pete. Sorry. Um, but uh, this is might be our opportunity to talk about their. Uh, Zara's bad behavior as a neighbor um, more than anything else because we have been getting complaints. We 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 have heard these things from the neighbors, so that's where we are. And the applicant's not here to explain to us what exactly it is, and I wasn't sure if your office had received any information. We we haven't, but we have heard complaints about the Zara building as well. So okay. So I had a couple of questions for Pete. Um, Pete, I don't know if you've had a chance to review what's on the Community Board 2 website for this, which is the applicant statement of findings. Um, yeah, I looked at that. Okay, so one of it, uh, or part of it under A, uh, the first section, it says there's a condition of granting the special permit. Commission shall find that the principal vehicular access for Wait, such. What, I'm sorry, uh, Carter, what, where are you? I'm on the second page A. That the principle of vehicular, okay. correct. And it says that the, the main entrance runs on Broadway, and it also says um, that most of the use is from Broadway, including customers, employees arriving. What you described is the issues are actually occurring in the rear of the building, correct? On the Mercer Street side, right. which if I remember correctly from 2019, the issues were with the Mercer Street side of the of the application and the fact that they didn't have a loading dock and that they were getting high frequency deliveries on right. the Nicolo Street, yeah. which, is, which it seems that this is a contradiction to the granting the special permit because most of the delivery activity is on Mercer Street. And that seems to be where the complaints are. That, But they, right. they, they switched it to Broadway for the special permit. I understand, but is that actually what's occurring? What is what for the current? Meaning is there delivery activity, vehicular access with deliveries, is that occurring on Broadway or on Mercer Street? On Broadway. Okay. So all the deliveries happen on Broadway now. So, okay. so the complaints about the employees, that's occurring where? On the Broadway? On Mercer. On Mercer, okay. So they are in fact utilizing the Mercer Street rear entrances is having an impact. That's yeah. where the employee, ent the employee entrance is on Mercer. I understand that the, the, this finding says that the employee entrance is on Broadway. So I'm just trying to figure out if we're going to have any comment, that seems to be the main comment is the use of the Mercer Street side, is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Uh, if, uh, I don't know. The applicant could tell you a lot better than I could. Well, I'm just trying to understand the residence issues. Sure. Um, hold on. We just lost one of the microphones. So yes. ask, uh, but that's as far as it goes. Okay. I'm just because just, we spent so much time on this previously, and. Uh, you know, like I said, this it, this doesn't seem to be about. Okay, they they could control their the way their employees behave on Mercer Street. Right. Well, that's my this question. Is about, guys, this is about something. I I understand that. I'm just try, you said the concerns are people sitting on people's stoops. So I'm just trying to clarify yeah, that where it's people. happening. Because it's a through block development, it's not clear, you know, unless it's we're on here, Street, it's, it's it's not on Street. Street. Okay. okay, thank you. And uh, Laura, do you have a, a quick comment? And then yes, uh, only very quick. Um, I want to support what um, Pete said, but 
I also wanted to say that I'm very disappointed that the applicant did not show up because I had a specific question for them and I'm going to pose it to you, but you're not going to be able to answer it. I don't think. Um, and that is that the, they, they wrote that the analysis required under the original special permit application is similar to what is now required under the new zoning. And my question really was going to be is, well, how is it different? Um, I don't understand how, you know, how this is, is working, this the, the switch over, because we have a lot of places that have special permits under the old zoning. What's gonna happen when they come for a renewal or an extension or something like that? I was really hoping to be able to hear from the applicant what those, why they found it necessary to do this, other than just because they need an extension because they didn't satisfy the requirements of the special permit. And okay. That's, that's all. Thank you, Laura. That's a very helpful question. Thanks so much for coming. And now, since the council member is here, it's a little bit out of order, but I know you're generally a busy person. <laughs> so uh, uh, Connor and I emailed a little bit today, and he said that you wanted to come and talk about City of Yes housing opportunity and your your thoughts and directions, and we'd be yeah. eager to hear them. Yeah, yeah. I'll just start out with what happened in economic opportunity. And I really want to thank this community board like I did at the full uh, full meeting that your criticism, your thoughts, uh, the way you approach uh, economic opportunity was extremely helpful for me. Having the no vote, but with these changes, because we actually saw city planning even before they get to city council, add a lot of those recommendations before they went through the subcommittees. And of course we fought for more and got a lot of the changes that I thought weren't even possible. And so it gives me a lot of optimism going into housing opportunity that if there are things that you feel like are even out of reach, just put them in because it at least makes it a part of the conversation. And because this process is a little bit different than the first two citywide uh, rezonings, this is going through a full Euler process. And so there will be a lot of opportunity for public engagement, public hearing, and for and the scoping is not finalized yet. So things that you bring up can actually be in the mix in the conversation before they get to a CPC vote. And so that's why I, I, I'm here. That's why Connor is here. He's going to have his memo done early next week for everyone to take a look at. Um, one of my biggest concerns so far, I've been to a few of these meetings. I was at the CB1 meeting on Monday, and there's a lot that city planning does not have in their presentation um, that affects the, my three community boards. When you think about the size of a window, uh, courtyards, I feel like the biggest issue is that they're not being transparent with the whole proposal. There are things that I fully support in this application, um, especially some of the recommendations for the outer boroughs, you know, the town centers. I think that's great. That's going to you know, build much needed housing. Um, there's questions I have about, you know, what type of development are they gonna put or allow in public housing or Michelama campuses? Um, and I feel like they should separate, you know, what type of housing is allowed on church sponsored, religious sponsored sites compared to Michelama sites, compared to, you know, NYCHA, which is public housing and has so far only 100% affordable housing. And so, you know, I think a lot of these topics, even though they're combined in their presentation to the community boards, should be really dissected and say, what should qualify each aspect? And I know that's a lot of work, but that's why, you know, Connor's going to have this memo for you guys to take a look at. Um, and I highly recommend look, Googling uh, George's Jane's video that he did with Friends of the Upper East Side, where it's an hour and 15 minute long video where he talks about how City of Yes housing opportunity affects the Upper East and Upper West Side. But that's really close and similar to our district. So a lot of the things that he brings up there uh, does relate to CB2 and the surrounding neighborhoods. But I think the, what he does best is talk about things that aren't presented to you. Uh, you know, the presentation that city planning gave was probably 45 slides, but there are really like 30% of the proposal. 
Um, and I think what we're working on now in our office is to how to translate that and simplify for people to comprehend and see how it will affect our specific locations. Yeah, that's good, Chris, because like the thing with this cities with their presentation is that it's so well done. It just makes it seem like this is great, mm -hmm. you know, and even things like, you know, our neighborhood's not the most impacted, what you're saying, but little things like, oh, the way landmark buildings can now extend their air rights, yeah. it's just a tiny little change. Well, it's actually not, you know, it's so, so if people are only seeing that, they just feel like, oh, good, more housing everywhere. You know, it, it's so disingenuous. Um, so that'll be good too. And some of the things that they're not mentioning, we don't know if it's good or bad. We're just criticizing that it's not made public. Um, and because it could be good for one neighborhood, but it could be bad for another. Um, and I think, I felt like they were much more transparent with the last two applications than this one. Um, and so it's been a lot more work on our end to really make sure that we're like, matching what they're saying compared to what's in the actual application. Is this the right place for um, the developers, if you will, to be held accountable to actually build affordable housing? Yeah, definitely. And where would that uh, be most effective? I That's the biggest problem, I think. Yeah. Ideas are good, but and loopholes are really strong. <laughs> and, and nothing is mandated, right? We right. do have a voluntary inclusionary housing program, right? Yeah. But it's not taken advantage of, right? And yes, if you map it throughout the whole city, we're going to see an increase, but not the increase that we would like to see, right? And not so, in our neighborhood, for yeah, sure. Exactly. You can be positive that every effort will, which is human nature. It's not, it's just something we don't want. Yeah. And, and we're so worried that, that you know, like this is, if it's not included in this now, you know, it's like, how do we ever get, the, you know, it's a moment that we're going to miss. And that's yeah. why we're so upset. Yeah. And so I think definitely make that a number one item. You know, there's, I think that's going to be number one on almost every single community board. Uh, just like, because that's the one thing that's missing. If they want to address the housing crisis, uh, yes, these little changes might help here and there, but it's a affordability crisis, right? Like, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. So I just want to thank you for having land use staff for on your staff. Mm -hmm. That's really helpful for us. And I'm really looking forward to the memo. Obviously, the portability is a huge thing. The other thing that we're we've encountered is that two of our districts, one of I think you cover a part of Hudson Square, right? Yeah. The southern half. And Soho Noho, as you know, through the Soho Noho, one of the things is that the, the thumb wasn't on the scale for housing development because the city identified it as a commercial corridor we've had some pretty big changes since COVID yeah. and obviously the enticement to build housing is more important but I'm not sure if this plan does anything to get more housing development let alone affordable housing within the areas where taller buildings can be built and and that includes Hudson Square as well and we've been talking about that a little bit and we haven't had any insight or haven't gotten any into how is this going to impact development in both of those areas, if at all, to encourage more housing development where it seems more practical. And then the corollary is that most of the smaller developments that we see in our board are condo developments that don't seem to be applicable to this and to the affordability. And that's for our board. And I, you have a very diverse community, which we've talked about before, but, you know, for us, how do we, what, what comments can we make that would be helpful yeah. to address the affordability and getting housing actually built? And, and, and just as an example, we have a couple buildings that have gone office building instead of residential. Mm -hmm. And that's, I guess those are the concerns for us. Yeah, yeah no, I, I mean, just like, the condo example, right? Like UAP would can can qualify with condos as well. However, that program sets sense in 10 years. And so like once this program is enacted, if a condo wants to create, wants to take advantage of it, then right, they don't have to after there's 
the, I think with condos, the issue is um, you can you can apply UAP to a condo building. The sunsetting data is more with offsite affordability. So like the way that the voluntary inclusionary housing program that we have now allows for you to build the affordable housing with elsewhere, not on site. They're allowing that for the next 10 years with UAP because they're getting rid of voluntary inclusionary housing and replacing it with UAP. They're continuing to offsite for 10 years. They explain that to be because there's a lot of developments that um, are slated for offsite affordable now, right? Because the pipeline for developing a housing is super long. Like there could be things that have been in the works and if it all of a sudden gets eliminated now, it's gonna mess up all these development plans that could be beneficial. So they wanna give a buffer period for folks. Um, but with condos, I think issue is you can apply UAP to a condo building. If you're building a condo building, it still has to be a portable rental on the bonus floor area. So you can have a mixed condo and rental. Um, the problem is you're not gonna qualify for the tax for the new 420 minute. The port UAP allows for that mix, but 485X, which is the new tax abatement state, um, does not. It has to be fully rental. And so the problem is the city has admitted that they're only seeing, they're only expecting um, UAP to really only work in conjunction with 485X. Like you're gonna need to have both of those two benefits to, to actually be able to build that affordable housing. And if you could, if you only can receive one, not the other, it's just gonna tank the project. So that's kind of the conflict there. And so something that George James has pointed out, well, is in some of his writing on this is, um, is that you're gonna see this huge disparity in how this is gonna shape development, where in areas like, like yours, where you see more condo incentives, you're gonna see no affordable housing. It's just gonna to continue to be condos and massive condos, right? Because there's no maximum floor area restrictions, right? So you're just gonna see like 3,000 square foot condos being built. And in the outer boroughs where land is cheaper and you can get and you want to do food rent, that's where you're going to see like affordable micro apartments now that they're eliminating the minimum square footage in a lot of these districts. Um, you're going to see a lot of like SROs and rooming units in outer boroughs while you're going to see these like massive luxury condos downtown. And so it's just going to kind of exacerbate the inequality of housing development in the city instead of housing. Oh, yes. The more criticism that we don't want people housing. Meanwhile, yeah. yeah. guy not it's like to, this right. is that George has spoken to. Like, if there's motive where there are incentives to build a condo development, this is gonna like you're not. This is not gonna affect those districts. But like, you're not gonna see this affordable housing in these areas because they're building condos anyway. Yeah. And, and then in, in Soho Noho, that exacerbates it because of the stacked retail, commercial, residential with allowed specifically in that. Correct, that they yeah. can just reduce it. Well, you, with so that, opportunity uh, also created flexibility, mixed use buildings. So, yeah, you can see that mixture. And I guess also to the point about office buildings in like Hudson Square, this does make it easier to convert to residential, right? Like they are taking away some of the zoning restrictions that make it harder for certain buildings to convert to commercial, uh, to residential. There, because right now we have a debt, uh, we have a date, it's like 1977. In 1961, in some places, <laughs> where yeah. if if you have a commercial building that was built before that year, you cannot convert to residential. But they're pushing that down to 1990, which opens up a, a ton more developments that are off, currently commercial that could now convert to residential. It's not all of them. There was there's a rationale for why they didn't make it the present day, um, but that does that does help with that conversion. The problem is like that's a you're, that's a leverage point for affordability because you're giving, you're granting flexibility to developers now. Yeah. So you, it should always be in exchange for something. Like zoning is a, yeah, is a negotiating tool, yeah, right? You know, like it's it's, it's a it's a it's a bargaining chip. And so why would we just hand out all this stuff without requiring anything in return but just the housing at you know. And it could be massive units. It could be like, you know, there's there's not, like we could have been asking for right. more in return, like some sort of affordability component. So, so that's a- that Carter, I wanted to say two things. One, in response to this whole idea of um, the more the more people who choose commercial development means that there are more people working and then we need more housing, but we're not getting it. And, and I'd say that in the Hudson Square, the largest landowner is Trinity Church, 
and they are not interested in residential development. They are not commercial. So those buildings are yeah. Yeah. going to stay the way they are. And then, and I was follow up on that, which is really important, is I think that quite a few of the buildings are underbuilt, right? In that area, which we've seen with the Disney development, right? So they took down underbuilt buildings. So how many buildings are actually available for conversion? And and we're 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 trying to figure out how this impacts us, yeah. right? In, Specifically, because I don't think that there are a whole lot of buildings. I think it's more taking down and building new buildings. And so what we're trying here, if housing is what we want, does the, for us, would it actually be revisiting the rezonings? I, or is this going to actually have an impact on what gets done in those two areas, which are really for us seem in, in a couple other areas the north, not in your district, but seem to be the few places where larger housing can actually go in. I think for your first part of the question about new commercial spaces, uh, you have to remember that we might not change the zoning for the next 60, 70 years. And so right now they might be new for 30 years down the line, who knows where Disney will be, whether they move out, and that becomes a good opportunity to convert from commercial to residential. And so I think even though in the current moment, it might not seem as a possibility, like we don't know who's going to take this on again and like the recency of when they're going to like change and what the market is going to be like. So I think, you know, even though Hudson Square might not look like a possibility right now of ever becoming a true residential neighborhood, that doesn't mean it can't be. Uh, and But I think it's asking what type of residential neighborhood, right? And knowing that it, it can have a massive opportunity to go from commercial to residential, like we need to ask for something in return, like affordability, right? Um, and so I think like sometimes take a step back and say like, all right, I'm going to be living here for and hopefully my whole life. Like what is my neighborhood going to look like when I retire, you know? So you're just saying because the buildings are there is actually a good thing because they could the big buildings exist if they they could at some point switch from commercial to residential uh, just because we have the buildings there now that's potential for us. I think it's just to look at it as like demolition might not be the only way to get a new building, right? Mm -hmm. Like um, what Connor was alluding to is that we're giving away a lot of the restrictive zoning that's in place now. And typically in a, in a community or in a neighborhood rezoning, you give it away for something right now. And right now, this just seems like we're giving everything away for nothing. Um, and so I think that's why we have to really leverage this application and say, what does this community want? And I do think, I do think to your point, like. Probably down here, you're going to see less conversion and more redevelopment because I think the conversion is really looking at Midtown because Midtown has all these pre-1990 massive office houses that are vacant and they want to convert them into housing and they can't, uh, in these areas where you have newer commercial developments, like in Hudson Square, I don't know how much of it is going to apply there, but um, you, what, what it, UAP does is it adds density to a lot of district where all of a sudden buildings that were used to be built out to their full potential are now underbuilt. And so that just creates redevelopment incentive where you're going to have like mid sized buildings throughout CB2 that used to be as big as they could be now could be 20% bigger if they have some affordable housing, which could be enough incentive. And because adding two floors on an eight floor building is like Super. virtually impossible, like, or just not financially viable, um, you're going to see now incentive to just redevelop the site primarily to maximize density. And so that's like another concern that we have is like there's a bunch of soft site, like, you know, on the top site when it's like underbuilt. Um, there's just, it's creating thousands of soft sites that weren't like that weren't soft sites. Why, why is it that an area like that that has potential to really make an impact too? I mean, I think this is for our for my point of view, for our neighborhood, we have so many small lots and sizes and that to give away anything for that is really just encouraging more luxury 
housing or whatever, one way or another. I don't know how they'll arrange it, but it's not going to be other than maybe one apartment. And that's just not, uh, why is it that it has to impact everything so dramatically when in fact they, the places that will really benefit us are places that have enough development space to make an impact on it. That's, well, it is like a broad stroke. That's what worries me, yeah. And like, yeah, I mean, I think that that's, when you do a citywide tech statement like this, you're changing the, you're not changing the zoning map, you're like changing what the districts mean. And so the districts stay the same, but they just mean different things. So like if you have an R7, yeah. you change it, it's gonna change every R7 in the city. And each R7 district looks, is very unique, right? So you might have something in your district that has the same zoning in Midtown, and they're really looking at the Midtown one, but it's changing yours too. So like, that's a critique of the plan is like, it's very broad and, and uh, it's a very broad yeah. tool. Yeah, and very open to interpretation by those who are, uh, Clever. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna ask Chris. <laughs> the, the sled. Oh, the sled. Well, George hasn't. Yeah, I the sled. George had mentioned one of the things with special little Italy districts that he had pointed out the reduction in the rear yard requirements. That this is the historical tenement areas. Yeah. You know what is the history of tenement development along with other parts of your district. And the reduction in some of the rear yard requirements is a significant reduction in light and air. And he had pointed out that that seems a little challenging when you're trying to create good housing. Yeah. And here we have the history of, you know, there's still air shafts in buildings, right? You know, that a tap light and air, they still are there, they may not be used. But I mean, you have you looked into that at all or I mean, what well, makes it some... deeper and deeper and less light yeah. yeah yeah it's a problem not... and, yeah. and some of the other changes because that's another one of our very special districts that predates landmarking etc has a lot of stuff that's a little unique and this seems like it will yeah, no, I mean changes. the reason why we have the rose in place now is because of places like the five points right? Because it was inhumane living because of a lack of air, the lack of light. And one thing George did bring up in our, the last presentation was like, okay, we get it now. Now we have electricity, right? And now we have air condition. So maybe you can make some sort of change, but is this the right change for I us? We have to put a lot of money into mental health. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so it's to pay off. Uh, <laughs> And it is a concern because I have a lot of tenements in my my whole district and how it's going to affect that. Like, and that's where we can possibly see some redevelopment, right? If someone realized he can maximize his lot space, um, you can see these five-story tenement buildings being demolished and something bigger that's going to take advantage of the whole area. You're like tacking on addition back by 10 feet is probably not going to be worth it. Like, if you have this twenty percent density increase plus yeah. twenty foot rear yard, that probably that could be enough to just want to demolish thing in the Very much so, especially if you own one building. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It treats the whole donut. And yes, yeah, it's like it's complicated. Like the way they talk about how the thirty foot rear yard is actually too restrictive, and it restricts the design options for us for a regular side, like twenty foot, five feet by hundred foot lot, like. However, like it's built already, like the buildings are already there. So we're not dealing with empty land where we want to see more complex, nuanced building designs. Like they're already built. So like- Well, that should be, uh, so it's a massive um, uh, bad for our environment. You know, de yes. construction demolition is the biggest, baddest problem we have. And these are solidly built buildings. They probably need love, but- there's a brick building. They're not like and a lot of them paper. have affordable housing in the yes, the city's right. mind. Do. Recognize yes. it. Yeah. I think that's another just general yeah. thing. Okay. It's like they only right. register income restricted affordable housing built since 2014. Yeah. Like that's their only record of affordable housing in the city. 2014. Well, that's when that's when inclusionary housing was first introduced by the Bosnia. And so it's like income restricted housing is one form of affordable housing. Well, you have rent, right? You have rent control, rent stabilization, Mitchell like all these, like the LAP programs, like all these different kinds of right. affordable housing. Article that four. Are now article four that are like 
at risk of demolition to get 20% of the new building to be a, like, it's like what they're not really crazy. registering that you're losing. <laughs> also encourages us. I want to ask Chris one more question. Uh, in addition to this sort of overarching affordability issue, which I think we've talked about and, and you, and you were very um, eloquent about it at the uh, full board. So we're all on board with that thinking. We've also, you know, are concerned about the lack of uh, input from required input from the community boards, the borough president, and the elect the elected officials, the city council members, which we are used to through Euler, but now it's going to be DCP authorizations, and we can speak, but they're not required to listen to us at the same level. So, how what are you thinking about this? I think put in that you do want to have a say in, in this. You know, like what that's what we did when it came to. Uh, I, and I mentioned in the community board, like commercial spaces in nitro property. I said there should be a call up option because we know that all the applicants aren't going to be the best. Applicant. And so, whether you want to take that route for specific things, like the council member should have the opportunity to call it up or ask for a full you, right? Like, just be this is, this is a, a negotiation with city planning and this is their first draft, right? And they're trying to get. You know, they're trying to start all the way over here and we shouldn't meet them here, right? We should try to meet them here because eventually it's going to get closer to something everyone can live with. And I think that's how the last two applications have gone. And so, you know, even though you see their presentation and it looks nice and you, it's easily to be bought in, I think just be critical and, and, and just say what you think, right? Because then that's going to allow for the conversation to happen. I, th I think that that's a very big issue. Yeah. Well, they're also they're taking away uh, the responsibilities, if you will, of the community board and even the opportunity to speak in the future. So it's really undermining any contribution that the community sincerely offers. And, and what we see today is that, you know, developers and city planning always have the upper hand throughout any result, right? Whether it's spa or community-based resign, right? And and even though, you know, we fight and sometimes we win certain aspects of it, we don't want to give them absolute power, right? Because at least now they know they have to get into a negotiation for something past. Imagine if we eliminate that opportunity to negotiate with them, then their first draft is going to be their final draft. Um, and so that's why I think it's really important. And you, they're not on the ground. Right, city planners, even though they have representatives in all our council districts, you're the ones that live in this community. You guys walk through these blocks. You know how it impacts quality of life. They don't you have no like, yeah. But but that's why the community boards are important, and I think that's why they should be valued stakeholders, and that's why people apply, right, to be community board members because they but know. not to be ignored. Exactly. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I think just push back on that, and I I think. At the last meeting I was at where John, who's the head of housing and city planning was like, you know, some of the things like eliminating the minimum square footage, he was like, well, that's just a starting point. Like we can talk to figure out what's, um, what the minimum should be. And for me, that was like the perfect response is like, this is their first attempt and they want to hear our criticism and our critiques and our support for certain aspects uh, and continue that process moving forward. And another thing that's come up in our discussions, I think you kind of hit it, is on the small and shared housing. We're losing a lot of it. As you know, uh, almost all of the SROs, I think, in CB2 have, are no longer SROs. They've all been converted to luxury, some aspect or another. And, you know, and that is not helpful, you know, with a lot of the city services, at least some, like, for example, the west side of the Bowery. I think almost all the SROs are no longer SROs. The little north of your district, but they're all converting out. To, they've all gotten rid of their last few tenants. And I think there might be one or two left. But do you think there's any chance of, you know, how can we get more of that here? What, you know, if we're going to comment on that, what, what do you see as realistic having you know, from a conversation from your perspective in your district, 
getting more of that because um, Mr. Manjin, when he was here, spoke about non-traditional in Chinatown, which is in yeah. your district. He said there's a lot of it and that they're trying to legalize it. Do you? They, they are. Us? They are trying to legalize it. And so I think the application is good, but those are like four or five buildings. Right. And, and we have to take this into the context of a citywide rezoning that's going to last for a long time. My fear is somewhere like in the financial district uh, where you do see a lot of these conversions happening from commercial to residential. They could say all, everything could be dormitory style is SROs and we don't want one full building to be just of that. So I think adding some sort of balance where you can have some apartments for three bedrooms, two bedrooms, and then have some studios, have some SROs, right? Like not just make it so they only build one type of housing moving forward uh, because SROs are needed, right? Like they're really popular when they were popular, you know, in the 70s and the, in the 80s. That's how people got their start in New York City. But what we don't want to see is a developer say, I can make more money just having a full building of SROs than having a building where families can live here and where people can live here for generations. Is, yeah, that's, it kind of, you hit the nail on the head there, I think, because the city services seem to be the biggest payer for a lot of the SROs tenants, right? As opposed to what you were talking about, which is what I think people envision for the SROs, which are short-term or, you know, shorter, meaning a year it's for a few transition, you know, for people moving the city, which is different than what we've seen our SROs more recently, and certainly the city's use of them because they're using them for this temporary housing. But that's not what I think a lot of people think about when they, like when we heard John Manjin talking about it, he was talking about it very differently. Yeah. So how do you make a distinction in encouraging that I think outcome? Well, I'll let Connor come. Well, I was just yeah. gonna say that the, the um right now, like there's like when you're if you're like a developer building rentals, like you have an incentive, like a profit incentive to build more smaller units, right? You're not gonna build a building full of three bedroom rentals because it's just you're just not gonna make as much money. And so you, there's an incentive to build smaller studios and one bedrooms um, and SROs and, and roommate units and everything. But right now, they're arguing that our dwelling unit factor is too high, 680 high density districts, so that you can't build those kinds of units. Um, and that's why we've seen this like loss, I think, in incentive of building SRO based housing. And so, what, and so they're eliminating it entirely. And we think that that's too far because what we don't want to see is it just let the market do its thing. And then we're gonna have no family side of the bills anymore, like moving, like in the, unless it's HPD and they require it in affordable housing, like they have their own unit mixes that they require, but like when you're talking market development, it's just gonna all be micro apartments. And that's something we wanna avoid. And so there's, there, we think that there's like a medium where you can lower the barriers to building SRO, SR, SRO units and micro apartments and shared housing styles but just not let that overtake the entire development market because we still need housing for families. And, and then is this to follow up with something that John spoke about also, which is break. And I wasn't quite sure fully what he was talking about, but he was alluding to the fact that you could rent out individual rooms in apartments mm -hmm. by yeah. changing things. And that for us, I think, is, is a big issue because we don't have much in the middle in our housing units, because we, a lot of our old building stock or tenement style buildings with a couple of rooms, but they're usually small. And if that went through, we would see some, I think some could be good in some perspectives, could be bad, but ultimately it's a loss of um, higher quality housing, even if they were smaller, because it would end up with these small bedrooms that then the kitchen is shared and then who knows what else ends up being shared in maybe a reconfiguration of floors. I don't know, but it, it seemed like a path without any clarity. And we've so many old buildings like that, that, you know, what would that mean? Yeah, I agree. You know, one of the examples he gave us uh, in another presentation was we need these dormitory SRO uh, buildings so that 
right now the the three recent college graduates that are living in you know south village could free up that apartment so a family could move in there but if that new sro dormitory apartment doesn't have light has minimal windows i don't think people are going to make that transition right um and so just i don't think you know because i don't think it's all parallel and i don't think they all connect right and there's something to living in a neighborhood and choosing you know there's more factors than they're not calculating they're calculating these three people will move to these right. three sros one family will move there but it's there are other factors in play and sometimes it is the market right like if that sro let's say costs three thousand uh, a thousand each sro but you can find a rent stabilized two bedroom for two thousand six hundred those three recent college graduates are still going to desire that spot so i don't you know i don't see it the way that they see it uh or the way they've been pitching yeah, i guess I, mis like I guess i misunderstood because what he seemed to allude to us was you could take that apartment in the south village and make those each individual yeah. rooming units in that apartment which would then further exacerbate not and i may have misheard him I, or he may have changed so, so, so it's it's, it's fun. About, yeah. there's a, a separate provision yeah. that they're proposing for creating sort of guardrails for subletting and for these like configurations of apartments for multiple tenants or like independent separate tenants uh, renting rooms at a time. What I think what they're trying to do is like it happens and it's illegal, but it still happens. So they're trying to create a framework so that if um, you know if people are going to be renting rooms, they want to make sure that there's no crowding, that they have adequate light and air, like adequate space, and you know all this stuff. I think that the problem with that is like we that's a huge reality in a lot of things. It's like Chinatown where you just have a ton of overcrowding and a lot of it illegal. And then we have buildings where there's a fire and then everyone gets vacated. HPD realizes all these people are living here illegally and then they all just get kicked out onto the street. And it's a huge nightmare. And it's not, you're not gonna stop people from wanting to do that as an affordable thing. But I think that the problem with that is maybe like an enforcement issue mm -hmm. because like HPD already does a bad job of enforcing housing maintenance code. So it's like, how do we expect them to enforce these guardrails in these sites so i think like i get the intention but like i think the critique can be more like what you're saying about the fears of letting of this going off the rails and running a ride with no enforcement to keep it in check. yeah i just i we have so many small apartments that have several bedrooms and you know many of them were the new bedrooms were constructed later and if those all become individual rentals, you actually take away the rooms away from what could be a family size apartment in a reasonable size space. I don't know if there are minimums on the room sizes, if there's, you know, that would, it's just a concern because like I said, we don't have much in the middle. In right. our community board, we have the extremes. Mm -hmm. And again, yeah, you can raise that. I mean, if there's yeah. a place to like restrict it further, so that it's not incentivizing everyone to cut up their two bedrooms, three bedrooms into room, into room and units. Right. Yeah, I feel like that's a legitimate concern. It seems yeah. to me a third th thing that so affordability, uh, this sort of authorization, DCP authorizations, but you seem to also be very concerned about the loss of the quality housing. Um, rules that we've had for so long yeah. and I, and george who is also we are consulting with him today he sent us a 28 page memo okay. which i have not met at, at three o'clock or three thirty when i was we haven't had, even no one's seen it yet um but this but this issue with the quality housing is not based on any scientific or measurement that yeah. we can find out and one of the biggest concerns that i'm sure george is going to reference because i heard him say it a number of times is that we haven't had this discussion, right? We have like we haven't had a comprehensive like look of like what's good and what's not, uh, and and you guys have to vote on it in a, in a, less than a month, right? And so I think that's kind of like the quality of life issue is like what to what degree is it bad or good? Um, it's, we just don't know. Good. That's, I like these overarching themes, you know, like big 
big issues that we can look at. And so we want to protect against. Uh, well, it has to do with lot out. coverage and open air requirements and size of windows, even size and quality of windows, I think. Oh, wow. Well, that's something you would know about, of course. Again, to ch chopping up uh, larger apartments into rooming houses, essentially. So, any other um, guidance, you know, that you wanted to share with us, Connor? Do you have anything else? Yeah, I think we're still like finalizing like, thoughts and those and things, and we'll share that as soon as it's available. I mean, I think. We want to follow a similar process like the council has said to the last one, where we try to take a comprehensive approach and sort of whittle down our recommendations to things that are tangible and specific and can be like fitted into the text amendment in a way. So it's not just saying, oh, no to this and maybe to this or this seems bad, but like being very specific about like, if we don't like this, then we'll probably replace it because I think. You know, this the administration, this is like their big thing. We're not going to necessarily stop it in its tracks. And so we want to make it into something that can actually be really effective. Um, so that's kind of like the approach that we're taking. And we want to like encourage community boards to do the same, to be really specific and I guess constructive in a way where you can put forward ideas that you have that they may be missing. It doesn't just have to be, no, oh, this is a bad idea. It's like, okay, then what's a good idea that they may be missed? Or like, what's like, how can they retain the same intention, but in a way that you feel is more effective? And I think, like, we want to be a resource for that. Like, I want, like, I'm always available for your questions and just to think through uh, recommendations that you have in maybe more general sense. And we'll obviously share our materials with you, but like, if you feel like you want to be able to get more specific, we're happy to help with that. Yeah, I think definitely call us if you feel like something is bad but just don't know how to like transition into something that can be acceptable because like whether we know it we'll look into it right and you know we connor talks to george james like twice a week and there's other uh land use experts that we have access to that we can just ask them if there's if they've seen something in another city or if there's something that's specific to one district in brooklyn that could be a good replacement for something yeah. that's bad in this plan. Well, that's good, Chris, because yeah. like last time at the full board when Eric was talking about Minneapolis as like, it just so happened a friend of mine came into town who is a big Democrat consultant there. And I asked him, I said, what's up with this? Is that right? And he said, no, he said they did build 50,000 50, new people live in where I live, but I'm not saying the rent's going to, you know, it's like, so when they present things like that and there's Low no subsidize. So, yeah, to yeah. pack it up. Yeah, an and important so you, detail. You leave people thinking that that's accurate when um, that was. Um, yeah, no, I. I think it's almost impossible to compare any other city to New York City. Uh, you know the amount of subsidized housing that we have, the real estate influence and the players' influence in our markets, uh, the pied de terre that happened in our in Manhattan specifically. Um, there's nothing comparable, like unless you're looking at international cities and that, and that makes it hard just because regulations are different, right? Um, and so when people bring up Houston, Minneapolis, San Francisco, I'm like, it's Apple and Orange, you know, like, you know, most cities have a comprehensive plan, right? And have a long-term view. They have specific areas where they do manufacturing, they have residents. New York City is a whole bunch of patchwork. Right, like the city just grew in a weird way, and we didn't have real comprehend. We still don't have comprehensive zoning or city plan for anything, and so it's hard to compare that. You know, I think it speaks to like just the difference between the way that they pitch it and like, thing, and that's why, like, yes. I don't, I like, I don't care about the slides really because I find them to just be like misguiding. Like, of course, what you said, like. Of course, when they present it, it's going to sound really great because they're excited about it and they're only showing you positive sides and they're telling you something that's actually just an opinion. And like, um, so, and you know, that's why this is so daunting is because like the actual proposal is like 13 pages. 
but like that's why we want to be supportive but you want like you have to sort of look through it with the fine tooth comb and if something feels wrong to you you should just you should just embrace that and not just believe them when they say oh no this is actually good for this reason like i don't know just trying to trust your instinct and and look at the fine look at the fine print like the slides are very different yeah. I don't think we have trouble with that. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I think, like, especially the way they're approaching this with community boards, uh, someone in the Bronx is not going to know how to advocate for you guys, right? Someone in Staten Island is not going to know what's good and bad of Soho Noho or, you know, what Greenwich Village should be, like you guys do, right? And so really take that approach from, like, the ground, the ground level. Um, and yeah. Yeah. I, and then I'll, I won't ask you many more, but my big concern is, and it probably citywide, is that the affordable housing that there is, that that's a very big incentive to get rid of that and then put back something that's a, a maybe a lesser quality, fewer numbers. And I think that's what's going to happen. So it's it's very clever. But it doesn't solve the problem. Yeah. It makes it worse. Yeah. And it gets rid of old, uh, older established families and neighborhoods and makes a big turn up very upsetting. Yeah. You know, like I was having this quick discussion with council land use today about the infill in, in NYCHA that this will potentially allow. Whenever we've done infill in NYCHA before this application, it's been 100% affordable. And I feel like that works, right? Like, like there's you been sacrifice a lot if that's the true yeah. result. Yeah. And, sure. And so by re like eliminating those restrictions, do you allow something else to get in here? And like whether that's good for that area, I don't think so. And so, um, yeah. And that's just like you're, you're right. Like there is a fear of like what can happen to locations where there's supposed to be affordable housing, um, whether it's like demolition and reconstruction or putting so much infill that really changes the conceptual landmark of an era. Yeah. And oh. I, I just also I wanted to thank you for coming here because and, and speaking this and, and particularly with Connor's involvement because it gives me a lot more confidence that there's going to be a much more detailed discussion that you're participating in at the council level because I think that the city is simplify this and try to have us simplify our response so much, particularly through this worksheet, which yeah. is yes or no, which, you know, we've discussed before, we don't want to participate in that because it's not helpful yeah. to, to what you've said. And I just really want to thank you for and giving, because I think this gives us a lot more confidence for yeah. our I think it works to yeah. disrespect. Because yeah. it's, 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 it's sort of like, oversimplifying something to the point where they're just misinforming you, right? Because it's not that simple. They're not making it more simple. They're just pitching it as something that's more simple than it is. And what George James has brought out is like how we talked about they've actually just not been explaining certain things that they're changing in this, like where you are. Like you don't even have an option on that worksheet to opine on some things that are in the text. And like the only way, reason that the worksheet came up at the council level is, you know, in, in Euler, community boards have like a, a vote. And so you're, it's either going to be yes or no, and it's going to be with or without conditions. And that's what's recorded, like, and filed away. It's not what's in the worksheet. And the only reason, the only thing that came up in the worksheet was them trying to spin overall no votes as being like, well, this many community boards approved of 50% or more of the worksheet items. And it's like, you're just manipulating data now because like that vast majority of community boards voted no overall, but they were trying to spin it like, no, there was actually some support. And right. so it's just like, I, I feel like you should just avoid it and just treat it like any other land use application as, a, as like a yes with conditions, no with conditions or whatever, and then just date your piece. Your Interesting. And I guess the other part that was a little bit difficult to hear was being told that we're background noise. And Many of our issues, particularly with uh, yeah. high and luxury development, and that's an anomaly, and that therefore our concern shouldn't be weighed as much. And that was something that 
um, Mr. Bannon alluded to as well. Whereas for us, we'd like to see our community remain diverse, but the development that we're getting is not. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it, particularly, and then we also have the other issue, which is not so much in your district, or I don't think it's in your district at all, but is the down conversion of family size units into large single home units, which is no way for us to address. We're constantly told, oh, that doesn't matter, but it has resulted in an overall reduction in housing units because it happens so often in our area that we're losing six, eight, nine units at a time over and over and over with the townhouses that were brownstones that were multi, you know, family homes. Could you like apartment combinations? Uh, well, not apartment combinations. Building. Uh, building okay. into single family residences, particularly oh, in the yeah. last village. Yeah. yeah. You know, or two buildings. Two you know, yeah. You know. that's a huge problem. I mean, and, and that's why we have a significant reduction. Yeah, they don't register that at all. Right? Yeah. But you can see that you can map that, like that kind of reduction. It's encouraged in that. Unit yeah. On a single site. And it's like that goes against what everybody <laughs> Like, you know, no one has been pitching that as. So it's like, but it's set up to encourage it, yeah, though. Not, and, and at the very minimum, they're not putting any restrictions against it. Right. Like we talk so much about minimum units, but no one talks about like maximum exactly. units, but, which is like can be tricky and is a bigger push. But like that can help the same cause that we're all talking. About. Yeah, and, and I guess that we see this as presenting an opportunity to get more affordability by giving more. But when there's a reduction, there's no cost right, to, of adding in somewhere else that this elimination of other housing over its larger impacts right, on New York City. Yeah. And that's, and we're told, well, it has to happen somewhere. And this is your community is the community where it's going to happen. And that's difficult to stomach and for us. So I think take that with a grain of sand, right? Because the same, com the same way we're talking right now is what, how we talk with council. Like we got the progressive caucus in a row and we talked about economic opportunity and Connor and myself talked about how it affects our community and, and they agree. Right. And so make as much noise as you can. I think if anything, they're trying to like mute you a little bit, but I think make as much noise as you can, because for uh, that helps me on the other end to be like, look, my community board voted no, but these are their top 10 asks. And that's what I'm going in with, right? And into these conversations. Like the way that they're starting at an extreme, like what the council members alluded to, like they're starting at an extreme, knowing that they already have, I'm sure they have predetermined compromise, right? There's things that they're willing to bend on because that's how people negotiate. And so you should do the same. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah. you can start with what you believe in, knowing that you might chip away, come to the middle. You know, there's no reason that they are last on it. And like, also, yeah, I think everything should have a public benefit. So I think it's good to think about these kinds of giveaways in that lens. Like, okay, we have UAP, which has a public benefit, but why doesn't conversion have a public benefit? Why doesn't NYCHA infill have a public benefit? Like everything should be thought of through that lens. And, and don't feel afraid, afraid to sort of I will indulge the uh, meetings, uh, ask for your indulgence, because I want to thank our council member Marte for a vote that he cast last week, which really doesn't affect us, but that was uh, Gail Brewer's Reso 232 oh, yeah. on the um, Scree and Dree uh, issue. And, uh, you know, the um, Mitchell Lama community worked very hard on that and the effects rent stabilized and rent controlled uh, tenants as well. But, Thank you for getting on board. I spoke to you, and the next thing I knew, you were <laughs> a co-sponsor, and it was a yes vote. So yeah, thank no. you so much. No, it's it's one of the only ways people can age in place. And you know, last year we had a huge success of bringing Scree and Dree to Tribeca and Barry Park City, but now a year later, people who were accepted in the program are being. Uh, rejected because their social security has increased by just a few thousand dollars, right? And so it's, you know, it's really, it's something we have to do and it, it could decide whether someone can live here. Exactly, well, we're, we're gonna continue to uh, right. be active on that issue together, I yeah. guess. <laughs>
Sounds great. Okay, so thank you. Yeah. Of course. Thank you. Very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, for, thank you thank for coming by. We are going we we are going to go back to our agenda and then um Connor you're gonna say because this item is last on our agenda. Yeah. Um because we just have a, one sure. uh, yeah, I'll see. Right. super. Okay. See you soon. Good night. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 Oh. Well, does that? Yeah. Um, I hope everyone learned something. And we'll, it will inform our discussion. So, but, but item number two, and there are some, I, I, this is a response. You're muted in the room. Oh, but I'm sorry. If I'm sorry. Back, right? Sorry. I, I, if we're back, Zara, I just wanted to, um, it's very hard without the pumpkin here. Yeah. And I'm just wondering if there's a way to have them come back to explain to us what they're actually doing. Because okay. it's difficult to comment. Uh, so you can lay it over to next well, time. If it's po it may not be possible. Though. I don't know. If I, I, time. I don't know. Well, when Chris said it's been around for 45 days, but it um, went to the wrong. We haven't had it. Well, we didn't get appropriate notice then. Yeah. Right. And I, so, I don't yeah. know enough about those notices if they're properly delivered. There's something that means for us. Yeah. If I just, it's Mark's back. Mark, you know. well, that might be a question. But I just wanted to raise that. Okay, well, concern that they're not here to. It's highly unusual. As I say, we sent it to the wrong community board to begin with, so I don't know where where they are. Um, well, that's not good. I had a good. All right, I, I, I know. Uh, but there was people did ask because there there were more people in the back wanted to take a look at this. Um, the committee did ask, do you have, Susan, do you have this? This is just a rough outline. And we have discussed 388 Hudson. We have discussed the community um, visioning report. But um, the committee was wondering if we could put together a resolution. These are the, the criticisms that have come out. And I, I put together a draft resolution. And if we want to proceed with it, um, I and I was hoping that you know you could say yay or nay, I, you know. Uh, but uh, there was feeling that they that we uh, didn't have something on record uh, of our concerns about the CBR. Well, I'm all for it. Yeah, I think these are the things that were remain uh, down. This is what we. This is what we people said, and the various members of the committee said this in the meeting. So, Katie, when you said the punch windows, that's where they came back with the curtain wall, even though the people voted for the other size windows that were. They had sort of, well. Did they even have punch windows in the? Um, they came back with the middle choice. They had a curtain wall, and then they had Lord brick and glass. I don't know if they ever really had what we consider sort of the village window more, but um, we didn't like what when they found. We're asking for real windows, not the. We, no, I don't, I don't, no, I don't no. We want, yeah, people I, we, wanted. We more. wanted. I think they they went to the bigger windows, and we yeah. wanted the medium windows. If I, I mean, not looking I think at it, we didn't want it that, and they got like back. We didn't want a curtain on a glass yeah. wall, but we didn't want the tiny yeah. thing either. We wanted. And I think what they came back with was larger. Yeah, I thought they came back. I think they, I think they came back with they both back with window what they do. Yeah. It's just what they know. I think what you just said is correct. What way? They came back with both. They they identified both window types. I think there were, weren't there three yes. choices? Yes. And in the report, I thought they had identified two of the top three. And if that's the case, then I think what we were saying was we did not want that third one. Yeah. We did not want that whole bus. Which is what Anita said they do all the time. You have it in front of you, Eugene. Just, I know no, that I you. Don't. No, I don't. Um, but I, that's but, what I recall from when we met with them. 
you and I remember, can't remember they remember they told us that they and we looked at the report at the time and they did I had identified they didn't identify just one window type they identified both and from their point of view they had identified them equally yeah we didn't we we were not in agreement with that right that's well, I think that one way to express it is that we would like it to relate to the architecture that it's next to, which means whether that's the brick or the windows or or some combination thereof. It's, uh, so they said there is a preference for medium to high transparency with large or floor to ceiling windows to allow for ample natural light. There's an overwhelming preference for brick to be used as the material of the facade. But that's what they said about the windows. We did not like April or the ceiling. Right. Uh, so how should what what would we like? How would we like to express number two then? Um, Wish I had what they had as supports supports floor to ceiling windows as the the uh, what did they supports no see the CVR supports floor uh, to ceiling windows. Yeah, I'm trying to find the CVR. It's um. If I recall the conversation, wasn't it that Frederica had brought this up? And I yes. think Frederica had said, she made it sound as if they had only identified one window choice. Well, that's what I need to say. The window choice they identified is the window choice they always use. So, uh, this, so this, which so, wasn't what the community asked for. Which is, wasn't what, what we, we, right, the community. We were in a survey. Right. You know, That's, I wish I could find the survey, yeah, survey because then I don't have. I have the CVR here, but I don't have the survey in front of me. So on the CVR, it says what I just read: medium to high transparency with large or floor to ceiling. And I think we, if I remember correctly, the large was sort of the middle thing, and the yes. floor to ceiling was the far right one. And nobody liked that yeah. far right one. It was the larger windows that. I remember that too. And I think Frederica's point was that we did not like the floor to ceiling windows and wanted that to be clear. Okay, so so we don't recommend punch windows, but we recommend we punch windows is fine, but I say we're I would just say we don't want floor to ceiling windows, okay. which is a curtain wall construction, no okay. matter what you call it. That okay. is cheaper, quicker, and that's what they want to build, but it's it's uh, much cheaper, or maybe not. But it is that's why the right. It's what they're used to. Yeah. It's what's being done now. Okay, so we do not want floor to ceiling windows, which were. Um, Here, I have I have the CVR. Let me share it. I found it. Right, which were supported by by the CVR, or which were which is called out. Is that what they're giving us? Whether we. What doesn't matter really what we say that they're getting. But there you go. Yeah, so this is the CBR. I don't know why all of it's not loading right now, but so we, uh, we, but can you see the, the one slide on the left that says the transparency? Yeah. Um, so what they had told us, I just want to be clear. So what they told us was these were the responses they got from the survey. And so the dots indicate the responses from the survey. And so they indicated both the larger windows and the floor to ceiling windows, right? There are four window types. And that they had identified, so both apparently looked like they got equal, roughly equal votes. And they they, they called out these two votes. So the middle okay, so there so and then they have that curtain wall and the curtain the, wall is right. The curtain wall is not right. something they identify. So that's not what they're considering for the ceiling. That's so that right line is interpreting it. All right. Okay. So what is what's the what's the uh, yeah. what they said? The second one on the left part. What's um that's says, the so on the left it's small windows, larger windows, floor to ceiling windows, and then the curtain wall. Right. Very few people vote for for curtain wall, almost no one voted for the small windows. So we would prefer the large window of all of the committee. I'm okay with the, the two middle. Yeah, I think the middle. The two, yeah. 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 I, I think what yeah, I understand what we prefer. I'm saying this is floor to ceiling, but they're 
differentiated. Yeah, that. right. And I'm From okay with law. that. I think it's that, differentiated. And I think I think Frederica, because I was agreeing with Frederica when she said it, so I think. I, I don't want to speak for her, but I got the sense we were on the same page. And I think we both interpreted floor to ceiling to be curtain wall yeah. when we read oh, it. Okay. In there. Okay. And, we and so we, our interpretation was wrong on what they. So should we take out the window comment altogether? You reinforce the window. Yeah. Okay. So we, so, okay. Uh, so we did recommend punch windows. That yeah. was it. And operable would be good too, to take <laughs> the obvious. <laughs> right. Um, so. Let me. So two or three are fine. Uh, the CVR supports large windows and floor to ceiling. And floor to ceiling. Why? Why? Don't say floor. To but ceiling. that's what they're calling it. That that's what they them, call it. I, I and then that add a curtain is, wall. So oh, that's the word. I don't know what that. That is floor to ceiling. Is, so that's and that's why we were confused when we read that in. Their reason. And that is a curtain wall, by the way. I'm sure it is. It just has a few mullions. It, it all outlines the division. Or should we say that the committee recommends or supports the large window instead of the floor to ceiling? But but the, I just want to point. This is this is reflecting what the community right. Okay. And responded. Okay. So I don't. I find I don't find any issue. I mean, when we had we had had this explained to us by HPD. Yes, we, we did. Yes. Yeah. Running out of time to have our reading discussion. So. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. And, uh, okay. That's fine. But we've got, we now agree. Any other uh, comments on any of the others? Just say if you wanted to say anything about the windows, I would say we, we do not want a curtain wall. Okay. Just to be clear on that, since there seems to be an issue with point of dealing versus. Okay. Yes. Okay. Let's, yeah, let's be clear that that's not the same choice as. Floors because I think that you're right, that's where the, the initial yeah. confusion that, that wasn't a separate choice. Yeah, well, I think one, uh, the design excellence, if you will, that is something that will be very difficult to push through, apparently, because they didn't, they didn't hook on to that. But we really would want creative solutions, not just. This is a you know an extraordinary site in an amazing neighborhood, incredible architecture. We really don't need uh, just a generic, a thoughtless uh, in line. In, in a follow up discussion that Eugene and I had, they HPD said that they really recognize you know the Im importance of this. But I what you have consistently said with creative solutions in this meeting, and we I, I'm sure. We, I think that should be added because yeah, I mean, the, the committee has really. It's worth right. saying because maybe somebody high up will go, wow, that what a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so is this uh, any other correction? Because we do want to talk about the city of yes, housing opportunity, although we've already had a lot of discussion about it. Well, are, we, are we voting on the, um, before we table the 388 Hudson, do we want to take a vote on this? A second. Yeah. Okay. Happy to happy to take a uh, what are we voting on? I got lost. We're, okay. Yeah. Okay. I got all it. in favor? Uh, any opposed? Any uh uh abstentions or recusals? Okay. Uni passed unanimous. Okay. We can move on to City of Yes. Can, can before you can move because we still haven't finished one. Can I just ask Mark? Yeah. Mark, on the notice we received uh, that was delivered to CB1 for the 503 Broadway. I'm sorry. Because the notice wasn't properly delivered to us, does that impact our time on responding on that? There's a time for a response that's on the ZAP form. I can go get that for you. Yeah, I'm just curious if not, not having proper delivery does that impact the timing because the applicant wasn't here? I can inquire. Tammy, when she forwarded it to us, also notified whoever it was that was sending it to her right. that our time should not be impacted by their error. I did not see a response to that. 
Um, are we up against the deadline? Is that? Uh, I, I don't know. That, that was uh, we just don't have them here to answer. We'd like them to come back. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Maybe. Maybe. So, show yeah. have anything. Should, should we allow? Should we ask her? Uh, sure. Well, why don't I go find out first? And okay. Uh, should take two. So do you want to just ask? Why can you? Yeah. Can you elevate her? You have the thing, or do I? I. Yeah, I can do it. Do you want me to do it? She's rejoining. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Chelsea. Welcome. Hi. Thanks for promoting me. Um, yeah, I was hearing the conversation. Um, so yeah, I, I looked at my emails when um, you all first started talking about this and it was delivered to you on May 24th. Is that correct? I'm not sure. Let me go check that out. Sound right? Or, okay. Uh, my understanding is that- um, It was delivered to somebody on May 24th. Whether that was us is another question. So I, yeah, I know it was it was um, inadvertently sent. Um, to a different board, but I believe that um, a correction was made on the 24th. And my understanding is that it would be 45 days from when it was delivered to you. Okay. And if that doesn't line up on the Zap portal, then I can um, I can flag that for the team that works on that at DCP and we can get that adjusted because you all should have the 45 days. Well, it's not a year of action and a public hearing is not required, but because we knew about this problem, this is a chance. Gives us yeah. You don't think why? It gives us enough time. I mean, I'm I not a counting the calendar expert by any means. But 45 days <laughs> now, but it puts it like Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So that's not enough time. Okay. Thank you, Chelsea. Yeah. Appreciate it. So are you were saying this was this is not um, this is not accurate. Oh no, uh, Mark is checking on that, but I, just forty five days does not leave us enough time to have the applicant appear before us because they were not here tonight. I see for our next full board meeting. Right, but because yeah, not they haven't here. indicated to us their plans. They're aware that it was that this was sent to you all, um, but. We they haven't communicated anything to the department about their plans to present to you all. Yeah, and it's just difficult for us to engage on it because they're not here. Yeah, I understand. It's unusual, as as you know, usually people participate. Yeah, yeah. is it possible to ask for more time that they can return to us? That it would be after our next full board meeting in July, which I don't know for sure, but it's probably the eighteenth. It is the it's scheduled for the eighteenth. And according to Zap, our time runs out on July twelfth. Yeah, so I can week. ask. Um, I'll ask Andy about what the protocol is. I think because it's a non euler faction, I mean, it doesn't have to be certified. It's really up to the applicant. If the applicant does not want to present to the board, that's their decision. Um, and if they so if they want to have this at be voted on review at review session by the city planning commission without having presented, that's their decision to make. Um, we can't force them to talk to you all, unfortunately. Um, but I can ask Andy about whether or not um, we can extend the deadline. I think because it's non euler we could if, if yeah, the applicant you. wanted to. I mean, we, you know, we have a concern. We, you know, we've heard a concern from the neighbors and this was made clear to them in the past. And, we, and this is our opportunity to straighten it out with them. Yeah, 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 I understand. I'll um I'll check in with Andy about um potentially extending the 45 days and um and then I'll follow up with Mark. Yes, yeah, that would be good. I think also we had a very successful uh interaction last time. Yeah. So it might be something that they want to maintain. And a big it was a big it was a big process, and there was a lot of effort on everyone's part, them included. They looked pretty good on the meeting us. Yeah, I remember a guy who had been their London manager or something meeting with us briefly. Yeah, and we put a lot of work into it. Yeah. Okay, so now, City of Yes Housing Opportunity. 
today, and we'll send it to you. I haven't even read it, as I said, mentioned. Today, George Katie, could I, could I preempt the conversation by just asking some dates about the dates? So I know that Honor and, um, and uh, Chris Marte had said that they were going to have a report that they were preparing for this. Um, it sounds like that report is going to be, was it like another week or so before they could release that to us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From right? Hey, Connor, how are you? Monday? Monday, Connor. It's great for us to, you know, have time to incorporate that and digest the report. Yeah. What's your wait? What What are you aiming for? for well, resolution. Yeah, that's the thing. So originally, you know, we were aiming for getting the resolution, I guess, voted on at this meeting and passing it at June's full board. But we had also talked about the um, the possibility of doing it at July. Yeah. Well, because don't uh, you have? Oh, didn't they basically say that it's not going to CPC until September? The rolling. Yeah, they said the deadline yeah. was was really not like a, a hard deadline and I think um, Chelsea could also speak, I think she just dropped off, but yes, they told us that, yeah, I think September is right. So up till then they'll accept uh, feedback from us. Um, we yeah. August is out for us because we don't meet in August. The full board doesn't meet in August. Right. I think, so, I mean, I think you can take that time. Like, I don't think there's anything to lose from that because you just want it to be in the packet for CPC. Right, yeah. like yeah. So, I so think like, that, so <laughs> does it make sense for us to instead of rushing it through this meeting, to take the time for us to do it, Susan? You're muted, Susan. <laughs> and Susan's gonna shoot me down. <laughs> All right. Now, you, one thing I would really love to hear from folks, or you know. I am supposed to, at Borough Board, supposedly they are going to have a vote on this, and I feel that they're pushing it through, and I do not have any intention of voting on something when we have not reached a conclusion. But I would be, it would be helpful if there was a list of, of issues that I could raise, at least questioning some of the, you know, the elements that are you know particularly problematic maybe i can even try to push the vote to the following month but right now it's it you know i mean it's very unfortunate that the borough president is trying to move this forward so quickly okay well the red zone is going to have the issues outlined not a position so it may not be voted on but it will outline the, for the standing issues, I think. If, you know, so while that's not a vote, wh whatever they may be, whichever way the board goes, they'll still be the open issues. When, when's for a board also? Um, th not this, the week next, th Thursday after next. Okay. And we have our full board, board that night. So mm -hmm. borrow board occurs even if we can't vote in time right. to affect in twice. Yeah, yeah. But just if like we we theoretically, you know, have our materials to you guys before then. So if it's just about issues to raise, I don't know how you would want to do it, but like that's something that would be included and hopefully in line. And maybe something can be discussed outside of a meeting for what Susan says at that, because it's not gonna be it's not gonna be a yeah. vote or anything. Yeah, right. right. But just to clarify, Susan, and, and Janine's also here, but, you know, really can't vote on it, right, if the board hasn't had its discussion. And obviously, this is a fairly obviously. substantial, yeah. you know, issue. And and as a result, I, I don't think it's going to influence the borough president's vote that he has. So, and isn't that what borough board is influencing? The borough board vote doesn't go to city council. I don't want to just influence it the borough president. I want to enters. influence my it's other like, chairs who will take ideas back to their right. board. Yeah. Well, it's going to be too late to bring ideas back. 
is the boats happening? Well, they might also be in the same situation. I'm sorry, I don't. Yeah, not, I don't want to overspeak, but I will say that um, I believe that the there's like in, with the borough president and community board recommendations. There's also the borough board, like that's on the record for city planning commission as well. Is there an August borough board? No. July. I, I know, but it, but we but she's going to be in the borough board in July in the morning at our it, no, June. And July. If we don't if we push off the vote to July, she's in the same situation. But isn't the deadline prior? No, this we've been told September. He said it was rolling. Yeah. Did they change that? Because I that's when the vote in city planning is, but when is that's the deadline to respond? They told us since it's non it's a non Europe action that they were going to be it's, lenient with the deadline. Is that what they were telling like, us? It, it's like with the the last round where they like gave you some flexibility on it, because the point is just to have it for the hearing and before the vote at CPC. And if that's all been pushed back, then your technical deadline might be like July 6th or whatever. But it's not like, but you can send it in late and it would still be considered through the process. And and this is the follow-up since, since you're here with us. And I'm assuming that the different board's recommendations are important to our representatives and city council. Who, mm -hmm. Will discussions be happening? You mean at the yeah. council level or the council level or Caucus. are those discussions yeah. going to be waiting? No, I mean, there's discussions now. I mean, because there's um, outside of the formal process within the like subcommittee and committee and stated, um, there's briefings at all levels. Like there's the caucus, like progressive caucus that we're in. There's all the other caucuses. Um, there's democratic conference where all the democratic council members discuss agenda items and they've already been talking about this like there's briefings amongst you know yeah it's like there's a lot of conversation happening within the council and and a lot of that includes like where the community boards lie and stuff i i just bring it up because you know we had discussed this and raised this last month which is how much more can we add with more time mm -hmm. that becomes how I'm not sure the more time we add, it's going to change much. Mm -hmm. or the, the, the only thing I'm going to say in response to that, Carter, is that we're just getting the expert comments and Connors. We I haven't, agree. you know, I'm not that's disagreeing. the missing piece. I, I agree with you. I think we've digested what we can from all the things that we've heard, but now we're just going to have some, is there an additional layering? We have it, you know what I mean? And, and, and it might, as Connor says, and George has pointed this out too, it might be things that we haven't identified or heard about because they're things that are sort of hidden. Mm -hmm. in, you know, Susan, the yeah, Susan has her. That George specifically, I remember him saying, is that there are things in there that nobody has been discussing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the, yeah. A very close. And that's the some of the stuff that I'm really interested in. Well, yeah, he has it in his memo. We're trying to incorporate as much because, like, we're actually just reading the text, like, mm. not the slot, like, not the slides and presentation materials, but just yeah, the sure. text itself. So, like, just trying to record every change, and a lot of it is non-substantive. A lot of it is like cross-reference updates and organizational changes. But we're trying to like record every actual like substantive change so that you have it without having to like read the 1300 pages. But, and that's what, that George is doing the exact same thing. And so like, I feel like it is worth having those materials in front of you, so you have those. And like the rear yards and things, that's an example. Of, like that's not in their materials, George just raises that. Um, and it affects our community. Yeah, yeah. and you know, um, I think that you don't wanna wait till the last hour, obviously, but um, I think that was something that our office has been advocating for is like alignment within the issues because if we're on the same page about things and we're both pushing for the same changes, I think that like kind of makes it stronger. So it's helpful to like align, like on the things that we agree with, agree on, it's helpful to like show that through the resolution. Well, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work what you're doing. It's not really 
volunteer work, if you will, for some of us. But what concerns me is that it's um, picking up all the nuances mm -hmm. that are not readily apparent to any novice reading it, period. You don't even know what I'm talking about. But the people who were designing it and developing it had that built in. And I'm not to be too, you know, whatever your conspiracy, but, you know, I do think that that's it's intentional. Intentional. Yeah. And our community is, because of the, uh, all the specifics of it, it has a lot of possibilities for that. Mm -hmm. Whether yeah. it's the size or the corner or the, you know, yeah. that worries me a lot. Well, yeah, that's that's sort of like what, what we're trying to bridge is yeah. that dissonance and like help assist you like digest information. Because a lot of what we did with economic opportunity was like not, had no opinion attached to it. It was just breaking down what it was. And so we want to be intentional about separating it so you can actually just digest it for yourself and then also see how we think about it. Like our thoughts are going to be in there too, but it's also just important to understand what's in front of you. So I think George does that and, and that's what we're trying to do as well. Can, can I make a motion for something and then we can- You're making a motion. So, so we had decided last meeting that we were going to move forward with a recommendation for this month. I'd like to put on the table that we reconsider that. Uh, because we did vote on that and have a discussion so we can on this point, just trying to add a little order here so that we can get through any potatoes. So if the, I don't know which way people would want to go, but if we want to make our recommendation for July, then we should just undo what we said last month first. And um, so I'd like to just put that motion on the table since... We're, we're switching up the timeline that we had agreed Separate. on as a committee. Well, you second right, I'll second that motion. Yeah, okay. Okay, so do we want to... Uh, discussion, now, is the motion on the table, so it's proper to have discussion at this point. Anita, I see your mouth is open. <laughs> <laughs> I try to keep it up. No, I was just uh, thinking about what we were just handed today. And I don't know, that seems like an opportunity that we should take advantage of. I don't even know. I, didn't even I don't even know what it is, but it's a I lot of pages sure. and it's from somebody who knows. Short change <laughs> thing, right? Yeah. yeah. And then we also are anticipating uh, Connor. I don't know if any of the other, other council members have any other materials that they are preparing. Not um, least. Uh, but I, so I think that there might be to our benefit if that we do extend this to have a board's mm -hmm. response for July, if we have more meaningful input, then we can give a more meaningful response. I'm looking at the time, but it's, it's, uh -huh. it's July 10th is our um, committee meeting and the 18th is full board. I have arranged family trip so that I can be here for July 10th. <laughs> but it, but it, it would it would be helpful though between now and then to come to that meeting without is I mean and this is not me because I'm not writing it but I just put that out there as but yeah just so we don't spend time we have you know I don't never ending discussion on it. You know I you know we've had several meetings and I actually found found them very helpful. Yeah. You know, I don't know if we want to, I don't even know if there's time to schedule another, you know, to, to put on the calendar, make a hold for another meeting uh, before the 10th. Before the 10th or after the 10th? Before the 10th. Before the 10th. Before the 10th. We so, can finalize on the 10th. So that next not much. I, I know, I know, because it's going to be on the 24th, probably. Yeah, today is the People are going away, too. I know. I, well, I'm free on the Monday. On the 24th? And the 24th. I can do that Monday. Traffic and transportation is on the 25th. And schools and is on the 24th. And cannabis is on the 26th. We we can work on right if 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 it's possible to schedule something. 
Well, the 24th is something, I mean, we, could we meet at five so we don't conflict with schools? Like 5.15. I, I don't know. I mean, it's not going to be a quick meeting. On Monday, we can only do one meeting at a time. Yeah, the second. Oh. Um, we I could try to get a second location um, and we could use the Borough President's um, Zoom link if that, assuming that it's available on July, I'm going to bet you a good beer it is. So it's June 24th. June 24th. Yeah. The Monday. So week from this Monday. Yeah. Um, I could try. Um, yesterday. We could do it by Zoom too if we need it. So right now, we can't vote. Unfortunately, it's got to be a it's got to be a meeting some, if you're going to vote. Some people have to be here. Four people have to be in the room. Did that pass? Okay, are you saying yeah. five instead of the normal? No, it could be six thirty if we get another. What other locations are available? Um, that's always a, a, a question. NYU is not being completely cooperative. Um, not not uncooperative. They protect their spaces at the beginning of every semester, and they consider the summer semester to be included in that. Yeah, of course. So I would be looking at either the um, the place where we're going to have full board next week, which is Lennox Health, whatever, um, or um, we had a successful meeting for landmarks at the Little Red Schoolhouse, and they'll be out of out of session at that time. So that's a possibility. They were they seemed happy to have us back. That's fine. So that's fine. That's that, fine. And it would probably just be a classroom. It wouldn't be like an auditorium or something like that. Although I could get the auditorium. They have that they have that all purpose room on the first floor that we've used in the past. Um that could be a possibility too. Um yeah. I, I tend toward the um classrooms because they have smart boards. Oh, okay. And so it becomes easier to sure. integrate the zoom into the room. And we don't have any conflict of committee members. Thank you for checking. <laughs> Are you available on the twenty fourth? Yes, it's important. I can be. Usually, I'm not, but I can. I can make it. Yeah. Um, Janine has her hand raised. Hi, Janine. Hi. Hi. I just have sort of again. I'm going to preface with what Carter said. I'm not writing this resolution, but I think we should listen to what you know. What the experts have to say, but I do think that meeting would be more productive if there is a draft a pretty good draft which i know requires work before the meeting um yeah. sitting around and talking about it i don't think it's going to get us to there is one. And, yeah so there is one already there is one. we just are seeing now would i email it to Jean? sure okay yeah i'm sorry i hadn't seen it so okay yeah. Mark, nobody has it's a copyright yeah you want a copyright yeah, no, there are. Or I can make more. I mean, yeah. And I think uh, if the, uh, I haven't read the, but I think the focus should be get right down to it, what we don't like because we don't want to summarize. We don't want to generalize. We don't want to. That was Chris's advice, right? Just like. Just get right to it because yeah. otherwise we're going to get lost. And this is a distillation of our discussion last time. It does follow the topics in the worksheet but that's what we did last time you know yeah. we, i was a oh, oh, wave applicable you know whatever so that's fine well so 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 then without digesting these other materials do we want to just look through this and just kind of yeah i think we should give you a but, little well the motion on the, do we want to accept uh, oh, oh yes so I we should probably vote on that first right well i was <laughs> Well, I just, yeah. well, we, we, I just okay. thought of, you know, okay. you know, but I'm just saying, you know, Chili Carter has called his own question. So, okay. so uh, are we uh, all in favor of making our recommendations for the July full board? All, all in favor, please say aye. Yes, aye. Any opposed? Online, any opposed? Any abstentions, recusals? I don't know why there will be. Okay. Motion passes unanimously. Um, now, uh, I'll take a copy too, even though I. <laughs> Do you have a copy? Yep. Okay, no problem.
did a lot of work already, Katie. You know, it's good. It, it, it's, you know, something to start on. Still is everything, yeah. I mean, I think we should assume that anything we speak about are are specifically the ones related to CP2. I mean, we don't really want to comment. I mean, unless people want to comment on. that. That's what we decided last time. Yeah. yeah. That's the most best. It was hard time. Start weighing in on every other. Yeah. It's also it's pretty much. Uh, We'll get lost. We'll lose our own star here. They're not weighing in on that. And what would we say anyway? Meaning. And maybe do it by order of what's our biggest concern, maybe, rather than what how they gave us their outline. Just go right for it. Get get the big items in right up front. Well, Chris said that up, most boards are saying there's not enough commitment to affordable housing. So I think that that's important. I mean, that if, if we're all saying that right on top, maybe that will have some impact. And no accountability. Yeah. That's the biggest yeah. uh, issue for me as well. Okay. Let's see. I'm sorry, the chairs wrote this document? Yeah. Yeah, our, our committee chair. Yeah. yeah. I also I have a time question. The additional meeting, June 24th, would be more discussion of this. And then would the July Land Use Committee meeting also be discussion of this? Be voted. Yeah. Okay, so July would be the vote so, on the resolution. Yes. Yep. With any other new business. Right, so right, perhaps. Right. So the side will do Broadway people will show up. Right, right, right. right. And the problem is too many other things can be added on. <laughs> Thank you. You have lots of free time, right? There you go. Pitch everyone. I know. Oh, That's why I'm saying. Two of the four. I guess as of tonight, three of the four. Not that. <laughs> enough is <laughs> never enough. enough. Probably. Don't break your record. <laughs> oh, boy. We're watching. <laughs> oh, should we? Did you get the brownies? Or did you miss Without brownies? That that <laughs> there is it, right? We need it. All about timing. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, it's very time consuming. These, and it's also very cavalier. I mean, I have to say, it concerns me in a way that. The zoning uh, issues were evolved over many, many years. They were altered based on actual life experience at the planning level. And then to sort of wipe it out, we're going to start that back up again, which is okay. I mean, I'm not against the change part, but I think there's so much that um, is going to be overlooked. Big, broad strokes especially between different uses. Mixed use is a big issue. I like that. I like that thought. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> I'm not very good with all the little details, but I got the big picture pretty well, and I think, I hope. Not, not too pretty, though. And it, we're, mm -hmm. I'm always open to suggestion or correction, Fana. Sure. Yeah, that's I have also not pride of authorship. I have no. Yeah, um, so there's one thing that I can maybe double check. I I haven't finished reading, but I guess in clarifying clarifying this first or the second paragraph about this package of zoning changes, not a Euler, so can you really not have that one? Yeah. I feel like. <clears throat> I mean, I know that Euler non Euler is kind of confusing, but I mean, like it follows the Euler process. And it has you have the same say as a you like th there's just are they required uh, is, is it required yeah it's it's i mean it's the same way that it gets referred out to community boards you can opt out but it is referred to you for a period and you can decide to not or decide to 
like some, you know, some some community boards on even rezoning, they vote no to not even take a stand. Oh, okay. But, but I it, actually didn't write this, so thank you. Oh, that's okay. So with I guess there's two major types of zoning changes, right? There's rezonings and tax amendments. A rezoning, like in Soho, is like where you change the districts and then you create a special district, you change the map, all that stuff. That's the one that's like 30 days, like it was community board, then borough president, then CPC, then council. There's a tech amendment. Um, there's no time limit for CPC and borough presidents and community boards go at the same time. But it's like still a humor and you have the same input as you would with the president. I mean, I should we take we should take it out then. Or just you can clarify that I don't know, I just would I think that's maybe a more accurate the values are we don't have to tell people we don't have power, they already know. Well, it's the same participation requirement, I would say, as yeah. as any um, it's just called it's just technically a text amendment. Okay, so I think we should take it out. Yeah, I don't want yeah. to have and then um I just in A one A like you say that. That's interesting that you say that because blue's sort of not under that impression. This whole who said that or who, who wrote this? I don't know. It, uh, different things have come into my. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, but that I was aspect wondering. of it we thought was one of the big things that that's taking away. In well, review, the, but, the, but the uh, on the other end, mm -hmm. when they were done with it, then we will. Yeah. Have well, like yeah, the CVS applications generally kind of erode certain reviews that you have currently and make more things as of right. So there's no review and more things that used to have more review only have an authorization now, you know, things kind so of- I think there was a confusion reduced. about it. Yeah, okay. And um, okay, 1A. Just one thing was that with the land in CB2 so valuable, I feel like that's also the condos conversation. So that's like kind of yeah. a mention there. Um, so but that's more- Leave in the state. Or I was just saying that's an, like I know you guys are talking about condos yes. as like a desired thing in this district, but the other not a desired by the market. By the market, yeah. Okay. Um, I think in um, huh. the whole ADU, the accessory dwelling unit thing, something that I've been trying to clarify is the way that they're allowing them as permitted obstructions in rear yards. Currently, where are, where are you? Sorry, um, second page E. Encouraging accessory dwelling units, such as backyard carriages. So the whole backyard unit thing, I think, is really targeting low density districts. And the way that they're creating this new definition of an ancillary dwelling unit, and they're allowing for permitted residential uses as permitted obstruction, but only in like very low density districts. Although George says it applies to us. So some of the conversions around basements and things might, I mean, I'll check with him. But the way I was interpreting it is you can only do it in low density districts, but he said um, that it could go in the back of buildings and it would be like playrooms. Or oh, that's that. different. So that's there, that's there's a permitted obstruction now for non-residential uses in in any residential district where basically like permitted obstructions is just anything that can go in a legal real yard. And they're now expanding non-residential uses in a residential building, meaning like common areas, playrooms, things can now just be built out into your rear yard. Yeah. So it's like, it'll just extend the ground floor back and that's allowed now. Yeah, so what it can be added on to the building. Yeah. yeah, it can be added on, but the the, the permitted- well, there's no light and air in those. No, well, there's there's multiple, I mean, there's, um, not there's light and air requirements for, that's that you just need in buildings. <laughs> but yeah, it's not residential uses. So there's no like, it's different. It's not multiple dwelling laws, just building code. I um, that's it's, kind of a good thing, right? Because then you can add on more common areas. Um, yeah, well, it's like just meaning, I mean, that's not your room. Stuff like that, that. I mean, that part is up to you guys. Just, I'm just, yeah, I'm just clarifying what it's proposing. Like, um, well, check with George. Yeah, yeah. Well, so the, yeah, I definitely know that the way I understand it right now is, is yeah, non-residential uses are now permitted obstructions like across the board, but residential uses like these dwelling units in the backyard, that's really only for like R1 or two districts, but I'll check. Check with it. Uh, the other thing that I, which I didn't write down, which we have discussed, is that if you have currently a garden mm -hmm. with dirt mm -hmm. and you replace it with a playroom, now we have a resiliency issue, which is a big issue in our area. Yes, yeah. exactly. Right. So there might be resiliency. There's no earth left. It's now all roof. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, negative resiliency. Yeah, because yeah, there's other existing regulations that allow for okay. a rear yard to be like on the second floor. So you just, it extends to the back and it's the rear yard is like the terrace. Yeah, it's hard but it's escaping. Pavement. Yeah. It's not up, uh, permeable. Right. So that, that was something else that we can put in. Yeah. Um, I'll check with him about this. One. Thank you. And, and then, then get back to me. Please. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I mean, I'm sure it'll be in our notes as well. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, I'll write down that you're checking. It's checking. Um, yeah, I mean, I th I'll keep reading, but that Thank was meeting okay, So that means 100% of the lot can be built on. Huh? Correct? 100%. Yeah, because well, a permitted obstruction is not, it's like something that exists within the legal yard, rear yard. So it's like, yeah, I could technically, there, I have to double check if there's like a coverage requirement, but it's not like, yeah, it, it could technically like extend to the Don't you think thing. that's a disaster? <laughs> well, I mean, that, yeah, I mean, it's up to you. Like, yeah, I think that- well, it, For the planet. Yeah. Oh, not just for us. Not, not, but for no, we just <laughs> take it over everything. Yeah. Right. That, Makes actually some of these neighborhoods nice to live. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think technically you can pave rear yards now, right? But like, you, there's no requirement of zoning that it be soil. But um, like my backyard, well, it's a possibility. At yeah, least. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. I mean, I think like it also creates access issues. Like, then who has access to that open space if it's on the second floor, and like. Would you rather just have a ground floor backyard that like it's like is it still an effective rear yard if it's on the second floor does it like does it fill like the needs that are fulfilled by oh, not for big trees yeah it's not a rear yard it's like a roof it's a well roof yeah deck. because like roof yeah deck. yeah it's an open space it's like there's air yard is, there's yeah. no green but there's air that's a roof deck yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, it's just I mean, that's walk. something to flag. I think that the re reduction in rear yard depth overall I think is maybe more impactful because on top of that you only need 20 feet now instead of 30 feet um which is a big change and that's something that has just been in the zone well, forever and what's the opposite view is that's 100 percent built you now literally have 20 feet if that one also has 20 then you have 40 I mean yeah. you know it's one of those it's also every six because yeah. that's that's where you end up in a canyon effect that's right Yes, in the like yards, it's... there'll be no more rats. You know what I think? I think George said <laughs> that if there were I quote you on <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. they another little house, or if there were a little alley or some of our houses of worse spot, mm. that that has to be like another entrance. But he was going to check because there are instances in our well there, yeah, there's a thing that he was talking about about putting stuff in a courtyard um as long as it is accessible you can do it and that that was like got more technical because dcp was contesting that but i mean corner lots have no rear yard requirements often right no, they can use a lot of places quality house neighborhood you can fill the entire yeah. block we have a lot That's of those entire, okay. so each each is um I, I, first of all i don't think we need to comment whether or not it's happening here but obviously this this will and and that was the expand you know this is probably h oh, okay this, this probably will happen right because of the individual rooms in apartments could become uh individual units okay so and that's what john this is more nuanced and we need to talk about this a little bit more so should we get this a then i mean we're not decided yet about we ha if we may for, have an objection for h yeah why well, yeah well i mean it, whether or not i just think this this is so minimalistic it doesn't address the issue because there's there's individual like sro type there's shared built with shared and then there's also the apartments where they could become that the rooms are individual. So these are, three, these are yeah. all different things. And I don't know if uh, Connor is gonna in, talk about that more, or if George has talked about it, but we need to understand that a little bit more so, because this type of housing is very important for us because it allows access. Right. And so, so commenting on it properly, but it can also take away 
from another from other aspect. aspects. So it's not just a blanket. So so number one is SROs. The second type that falls in here is I don't have all the the types, but you you have the SROs. You have the the rooming. I don't know what hmm. what the type, but it was the rooming units. Yeah. That's the new definition. Yeah, rooming added. units. You have dorm and rooming. 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 You also have dormitory style in. stuff, which is different. So there's a whole bunch of stuff under there. Is rooming units when they break up an apartment into? It's the what a new SRO is. Yeah, right? new SRO. Well, no, no, but a rooming unit could be in an apartment. Yeah, so it's a broken so up. You could apartment. have a shared kitchen in an apartment. I see. Whereas, yes. so the issue was is and the, and it, and I think what John mentioned, if I'm remembering correctly, no, 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 it's not a roommate. It is that a landlord is now able to rent out individual rooms in an apartment instead of a broker illegally doing it and breaking up an apartment and filling it. Yeah. Right. So that the landlord could take control of that. So you would have an individual lease, which is and you have a also shared different. Room, right. Living room and kitchen. Right. But but what it does is it it you there's a possibility without any further understanding of this of apartments, you know. Well, tenement apartments suddenly become every single room is rented out as opposed to apartments, which is not necessarily a positive thing because somebody with kids, for example, that. couldn't rent that landlord, apartment. They can charge. Right. And so it may or may not, but we should. That's as George, too. That's, yeah. And, you know, Connor may have some. Yeah. But that's an important distinction because this is um, takes an as built building that may allow some flexibility that could be positive or negative. Yeah, yeah. They basically change it. They they just they fitted the uh, term rooming unit to be consistent with the multiple dwelling law, which um, basically defines it as like a, a just like a, a room in an apartment. That's like a living room, meaning like a room that could be resided in that has is subjected to like light and air requirements. Living rooms under the MDL are just any room that's not like a bathroom or kitchen. It's like a living room, a bedroom, just any like room like that. And so then it legalizes the room, illegal roommates. I mean, it, no, no, it's not. They're not illegal roommates. So I mean, now I mean, if you rent an apartment out, you can have four friends living in it. Now the landlord would be renting. Landlord is there. Right. It's not without a landlord there. I think that's my which step right. Which has increased protections in some respects because you have your own lease. So you know there's not yeah, there's I less, see. positive and negatives to everything, right? So it's multiple leases for one apartment. Yeah. Instead of one person having the lease and that's renting up. out those. But they're leased out. to the owner. Right. And the, the, through the owner. Through the owner. Yeah. Through the so, owner. But that's a, a, oh, that's a but if you yeah. you know look, look there's a lot of negatives to having one person with a lease on an apartment and multiple sub. Yeah. Roommates is that is that you don't you don't have any standing in housing court. If you lose your sub letter, they don't have any protections. Like there's nothing. There's a lot of different formalizing as something that exists today, and they're just trying to like grapple with the fact that it exists, whether we want it to or not. Right. Yeah. No. I and, it, and it has so there's legal, pluses. Some legal yeah. Right. There's pluses. Yeah. There's also yeah. negatives. Yeah. And, and something that's enforceable about it, not just right. evicting everybody, but like right. they're making it, I think the biggest thing is overcrowding for them. Cause that's why they're making it like persons per fridge and persons per <laughs> bathroom is it's like, that's their way of like creating a, a benchmark for regulating how many people are in the apartment and so, so that you prevent overcrowding so that you can rent. Because right now the people who do it, it's like a full family to one bedroom. Right. And in a three bedroom and there's like four families in that apartment. So it's like restricting it so that you're not, it's it's meeting certain health standards. Well, they have that with, uh, there was a lawsuit with the Hasidim in Brooklyn because mm -hmm. they have so many kids mm -hmm. that how, you know, what's supposed to happen? You can't say you can't have seven kids in the apartment. It's not like roommates. Right. Yeah. But how many people are sharing their refrigerator? Yeah, it's bedroom? like regulating crowding. Uh, that looks like a good okay. It's interesting. So it's also weird. Don't forget, there are buildings where we have the like, bathrooms and hallways, you know, in our community board. They're certainly, you know, they're, they still exist. they're not unicorns. They're they're there, yeah. and they are shared as well. And so, if you have multiple roommates in one of those units, then using them too. Yeah, there are not that many left. Five, really. There, what do you think? 
And I think they're trying to encourage new development. Yeah, if we're going backwards, basically, mm -hmm. to where the old tenements were, because that's how they were all set up. The bathrooms. That's yeah, we, bad, it's, to say that. And uh, also the rooming houses was all out post war. That's everybody was rent, renting out rooms everywhere. So old is new again. I need to hear about those places in Chinatown where people are renting uh, a bunk in a bunk bed set. Yep. And they get it for 12 hours and someone else comes for the next 12 hours. Yeah, because I think, yeah, they're trying to- They've one in like that. What? There is, there's one building. Read about them in the parks, particularly when there's a fire. Or well, we have one of those buildings right now where yeah. we had a fire in a building on Orchard Street. And the, the biggest problem right now is that one of the apartments had like, like 15 or 18 people in it. And none of them had a lease. So it's our yeah. What is and it? So is it called? Scars is uh we shut down for like weeks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But the, the tenants are still out. It's been like a year. So all fifteen in the one room. Or in a in an apartment. Yeah. And like and so it's like and then yes. Uh, Carter, do you have any of this comments? No, no, I just I just think that that there is because I think that's an important part of well, want to certain. properly yeah. comment on it so that there's a possibility that it could happen. And and just the other thing is just taking entire apartment buildings and making each bedroom your principal unit is is something or, or large portions of it is can be a good or bad thing, but it needs some more discussion. Yeah. And uh, I, I think true, you know, but, you know, it's conversation points. And like Honor said, it is a starting point, but we just want to flag it as requiring more discussion because you could imagine if a family lives in a building in a, in one unit, right? And all of a sudden you have what was singular apartments sort of operating on their own is suddenly magnified. And there's not the whole structure of that changes. You can have significant quality of life impact. It's not necessarily negative, but it should be discussed about what. I think we have to be open-eyed about the new, yeah. about changes. I mean, overall, how all this monitor? Well, well, that's, well, well that, that's why I brought it up as an enforcement issue. I, I, have, I think yeah. that's one of our overwhelming issues, affordability, accountability, quality housing, guardrails and enforcement. Because they already don't enforce the rules. I know. I mean, I think it's happening now. We just and, don't have uh, a, a law to protect them. <laughs> well, Airbnb was so much, you know, like in a way, that's what people were doing is renting out bedrooms in their apartments yes. um, in an unmonitored way. Well, if but they own the, it, but in an apartment, you get picked out by your uh, landlord. Yeah. So, so the flip side is the historical SROs had rules. And that's why many of them work. And so the absence of structure is yeah. the issue. It is not, and, and that's different for each situation, but the structure is what provides, um, you know, and that's through enforcement of yeah, quality. Of bed sits, you know, right. they, in the old days too, you know, you would have like the bedroom and chair, you know, there's a way people entered into new cities, you know, yeah. That's okay. That's how they're, it's, yeah. Because there's nothing, there's nothing inherently wrong. It's like yeah. if you don't have the code to keep people safe and stuff, then it's actually right. fine. Right. Like yeah. tenements aren't inherently bad. They just didn't have plumbing and they were filled with like 100 people. Like, so we had, you know, like, and <laughs> disease was rampant. That's yeah. what I'm saying. And, 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 just, and another issue, I'm just, if the, Fire escape is accessed only through one bedroom. You have a bedroom on the other side. It's only loud if it's unlocked. To access the fire escape is well, a second means of egress. And so when we change these things, you suddenly have a whole different structure. That's, all the, that's egress, which is in any building, yeah. No, well, it's a fire safety issue. If you have individual rooming yeah. units that are yeah. rented out differently, you have a different structure in that. So. And this is also, that was, so, the, so, so most people don't, Airbnb, right? Most of the violations were that they're less than 30 days, which has different rules on fire exits. 
and stuff like that. So that was the biggest citation for most it? buildings was that you have to be like a hotel, yeah. which has all the instructions on the back of the door, et cetera. Okay. So, so a lot of it- wouldn't be able to, through. if you had a room unit that had the fire escape window, you couldn't lock that door. Yeah, that's right, that. right. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of other things there that may or may not, whatever, you know, the complexity yeah. of whatever this means, but that could result in reconfigurations. But just, I bring that up because that's just yeah. thinking this through. Thank you, that's, that's a big point. Well, I trust the city on fire safety, but I just bring it up on as a- But legalizing any building that has yeah. and it dealt with egress. Yeah. And that's, that's, is a lot of illegal conversions result in non-access to fire escapes. Right. Well, do you want to make any more comments now? Um, yeah, that's, I just, there's a lot more on that one. It's just a big. Or do you want to review and then bring all the comments for the 24th? I would rather that George and Connor talk about that more because I don't, I feel like we've lumped a whole bunch of things into one. And I, the deep, I'm not so concerned about fire safety and other things. I'm just, because I, trust that the city will do that. I'm just more concerned about that we address positives, negatives, or concerns for each of them. And I don't know enough about what each okay. of the different types are underneath. Okay, so, so okay. So we, we need some expert help on H. So define. Because um, this also could be because we have a large university in our midst could actually be something that people would develop in the shorter term and its use could change over time, right? Which we you know seen, you know, and you know, a lot of our smaller housing units, the people who live in them have lived in them since they were college students at NYU when they were accessible and had signed leases and still have those apartments. I know a number of people, you know, 90s and early 2000s, but that's the case. Yes, I know them too. <laughs> From the 70s. Yeah, I know, or even before, before that. So, yeah, so what we're saying is where you have it now, we do not see it happening in our community board, is we see it happen. Yeah, well, it could, and we want to encourage that yeah. because that, that, I mean, from what everybody's saying, that provides access to our exactly. community, right? So. Yeah. Process wise, is this a good time to ask some questions from, as well, a community member, or should I wait until? Oh, what does the what does the committee feel? I mean. I don't think we're going to go if it, if it pertains to the section that we've yeah I mean through okay. one right I don't know are we going through this I guess in the linear order yeah. yeah I mean if it pertains to our the letter we're talking about fine you know or, or are we trying to get through the whole thing and then go to questions yeah so that's I want to yeah prefer if you want to go through your internal conversation on everything before opening before which, which well, it, it, right. it is a business section, yeah. but I'm, I'm always open to questions. Yeah. At the right <laughs> but I think people are still reading. Okay, so I'll just hold. Thank you. Thank I'll you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think that I'm, I'm not sure really what I'm um, what Connor had addressed with the mapping uh, to the new four, I'm not sure what the number is, 480s. Four oh, um, yeah. yeah, 45X. Yeah, that, oh, uh, yeah that, right. that, that's an important part of that together. So what so where does it go in? For the, I, I'm not, I haven't. The 485X? Yeah. Okay. It was the mapping together so that it creates. Well, yeah, the issue with that is just that, um, if you can't, if you're not doing like they, they need each other kind of, and um, they, they're meant to, they're designed for each other. They like mimic each other. So um, like when you do one, you're actually 
qualifying for the other. Um, the problem is that apparently UAP allows condos to also take advantage of the bonus as long as that bonus is one is uh, affordable rental. Um, but 45X does not allow for condo buildings to take advantage of their tax abatement. Um, so that's the problem. And that's kind of like not really able, able to be fixed in this because that's at the state. But it's something to flag as like talking about where you really think this is going to be utilized. My thing also was like they always talk about how MIH, which is very similar to UAP, it's just mandatory. Um, MIH only works when um, coupled with an upzoning. Right. And so I don't get how this works without an upzoning. Like, why would you opt in if you don't have an upzoning to go along with it? Like, what's the incentive for folks to want to take advantage of UAP? I just feel like based on their own logic, no one's going to want to do it. Like the 20% is not worth it. Right. Especially here. We agree. We totally agree. So it's like you either have to give more or mandate it or do something to actually realize it. Or I feel like a lot of people are just not going to keep it. Exactly. I think that 45 X goes in the whereas 1A with Universal, with UAP, mm -hmm. Carter. Yeah. Okay. So I've made it. Yeah, it's an affordability kind of. Yeah, it's an affordability issue. issue. But you can do the condo and co op. So you could have. An affordable co-op in a condo building. No affordable co-op, like you mean cooperatively owned, like an HDFC. You know. Oh, um, that I know you can. Okay, you yeah. should be able to do because yeah, you can. HDFC it. is like us. It's like a specific status. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't, but they're not as common, right? Like no, but it's another yeah. affordability uh, yeah. tool that isn't used, but it could be. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're kind of. Like, cause the whole HGFC program, I think the city's kind of like given up on in a way because of the like till and ANC, like it's just not been, it, it, a lot and that's all topic. HPD also. Like, yes, that's it's not a zoning HPD. thing. It's yeah. The HPD. But I'm just thinking you can mix mm -hmm. affordable co-ops with condos and affordable rentals with condos. Yeah. But you, there's no such thing as an affordable condo. Um, I'm sure that I've ever heard of. Well, there are buildings like a condo oftentimes is just, um, it's, like a, it's, like a, it's like a class of building that can exist, that where rentals can exist within it. Um, yeah, but then- Like a rental be, condo with affordability requirement. Like we actually have a rental, building- On the rental unit. On exchange place. Yeah, the rentals. Yeah. I mean, affordable home ownership is like a whole nother program that the city focuses on. And some of it could be condos, you know, you don't know. Oh, really? I well, like nothing about a condo prevents it from being affordable but that's again like just sort of like an hpd thing they yeah, have a lot yeah, of yeah. affordable home ownership programs yeah. That yeah well everyone that i've ever heard they don't allow them yeah them. generally they're millions of dollars yeah george yeah. he, he yeah. talks about the rooming oh good so the mental health yeah age 11. But I'm trying to look up the 45X and it's 45X. 485X. 485. I meant it. It's the new 420A. How much longer do people want to spend reviewing at this point? Uh, <laughs> I ain't no need of the answer. <laughs> you came alone tonight. But I am full riders here, so I'm respectful of other people. <laughs> <laughs> I only guessed you should probably call me if you're not coming. <laughs> It might not be me, though. No, I know. I don't even want to get into it, please. I get upset, and I don't want to get upset. And you're right. It's not, nothing to do with you at all.
You have two. Can I take this one? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I the same, right? Yeah, it was the same. And Mark to read in paper form for me. Okay. We can ask if anyone else wants. If anyone else, George's name is George's. You're emailing it to us, right? Yes, Mark will email. But you want to escape the form. Oh. You did email it to us or you will? Mark will. I don't know. Okay. The George Jane. Did you email it to the committee yet? The committee. We made, you know, it was all coming just when we were sort of leaving. So I don't know. You may have. I... <laughs> Oh, man. Zara. It's here, yeah. It's heading, um, well, are we going to find out? No, no, no. I don't, it, don't it, see. No, I just I don't have this. It. It. I, I don't have it. Yes, I don't see it. We don't have yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, you have any comments, though? Yeah. I mean, I think from the second page, no, the second page, the next page, the third, we don't need to talk about it now, but just flagging E as something that we want to. Oh, the transferable development, right? On more next, on okay, the 24. Flag. Okay. It is, it is, uh, I mean, that is definitely going to affect us. Yes. Yeah. But I think last time, you know, Carter said um, it might create more housing. So, you know, some of these things are both positives and negative. Oh, I will say, um, yes. I don't know if you know this, but that TDR, it's for individual landmarks only, yes. not historic districts. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. You know, yes. Thank you. The, the concern that was raised was stacking them. Oh, you can't stack, they said, because it has to be between, it can't be between a landmark and a landmark. So once you transfer it, it's that means it's transferred to a non-landmark. Right. And so once they do that, transfer to another one. But the point I think that is raised, it could be transferred to another landmark. No, I, I just said or oh, you cannot do that. Yeah, okay. can't or, do that. It's like it has to be, it cannot be between landmarks. So once it gets transferred, it's automatically not a landmark anymore on on a landmark site. And then they are just subject to regular TDR rules at that point. So they could theoretically transfer it and then transfer it once more, but only through like a zoning lot merger or forever regular sites do TDRs. Well, that might be to someone's yeah. advantage in our neighborhood. Well, I mean, it would, it would basically be like, um, you can't you can't like jump all the way around. It's like, you're gonna jump once and then you basically are constricted to that zoning. We thought it was a good thing, right? Yeah, it, said. yeah no, we weren't. Um, and you also can't, they were saying that you're not theoretically allowed to transfer from a bunch of landmarks onto one lot because you're never, there's like limits on how much you can actually go over the underlying zoning's density allowance. Um, you can't ever exceed more than like 20% or something. So they, they said that there's like a, a guideline for like, for maintaining like a cap on how much you can pay. Sort of collapse onto one side. The, 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 one of the um, missing pieces of information, uh, did, was it missing? Did we finalize it? Was that we have city landmarks, individual, mm -hmm. and then we have individual state and federal. So they don't help me. Yeah, just help. Those so that was part of the No, but, it, but they are individual landmarks. So, so yeah, but these are under the purview of oh, piece, piece list of the So they're city, city okay. land, state registered historic districts building. Oh, in a building. Yeah. Because we have 89 of everything, maybe 40 mm. in the city. 40 in the city. Okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think but, it's just those. Yeah. Yeah. But there is that tension. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, like, yeah. We wanted to be very clear about it. Yeah. You know what it's up to, I guess. Or, or what the possibilities are. Oh, I will push this down. With.
with my grandson, we put the timer. On. We say, in two minutes, <laughs> this is going to happen. <laughs> two minutes. We, we, what are we looking to discuss? Well, uh, uh, down. are there any more things they want to flag right away? Oh, I was just a, a couple of small things, just one. Okay. Uh, Ian, the so, um, Air Force. Okay. When you say board president, you mean borough president? Oh, yes. Thank you so much. And then for B on that, um, it, throughout this, that we are commenting on uh, loss of, uh, or, or we comment throughout about the applicability of the affordable housing being included, but that's a blanket statement. Even though we see that UAP should be mandatory, it just seems unlinked because everything we talk about housing to talk about. So you want to add ability? Well, I, I mean, I'm just, it seems inconsistent. Are you saying adding affordability there? I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Add it to B or should we make a separate? I, I think- Add it to B. I think, well, just to be consistent with what we say on every part, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, increase the housing. Supply. I just want to make it clear. The affordable housing. Yeah, yeah. and the affordable housing. I mean, well, maybe that's not the. Is, that is the, it and? Yes. Yeah, we we're not opposed to increasing the housing. No, I I mean just. No, we just want to make sure the affordable housing is not yeah, limited. Exactly. I think that the important part, you know, is, is just that the zoning is a discussion, right? And if you take out the discussion, you have no ability to. Benefits, whichever way they may be, that's the issue with that. So, right, for a lot of things. Also, discussion. Okay, and I mean, I think that we that we have to be sure to weave in accountability in the in the in um in, in accountability. No, we have that guardrails and enforcement. That, that is something that Chris brought up, Connor has brought up tonight, and was not on our radar before. Yeah. Um, so that has to be go in. We have accountability. Should we be more specific about quality housing? Perhaps after we read George James. There's something that Chris talked about, but maybe after we read George's report, we can weave that in better. And um, this is Anita. Anita's point that you know the current zoning has evolved over evolved over time, and is based on lived experiences. Well, this is more an abstraction experiment, you know, <laughs> thought experiment almost. Yeah. Um, so, having taken all of your comments into consideration, putting that together. We have George's um, uh, report. You all have it by email now. We will be getting Connell's report. And when you send it, please send it to Mark, copy yeah. the G to me, and then we can get it to the committee. Okay. How does that sound? That sounds good. And we're going to reconvene on June 24th. If you're, you're welcome to come back. 
What time? Were you going to say 5 or 6 30? Um, now, could uh, we could we give a five minutes? Can you can, can you take five? We're we'll giving five minutes. It's a long meeting, but we, I I would be happy to give you that courtesy. That's kind. I guess I'll limit myself to one question and one comment. Thank you. My question is, what I want to understand better what the resolution means in one A by asking that UAP be made mandatory. I, what what does it mean for UAP to be mandatory? My understanding is that like for an upzoning, the upzoning is granted and MIH comes as the as a requirement of that upzoning. In UAP, UAP is the upzoning. It is the ability to add density if it's affordable. So what what does it mean to make UAP mandatory is my question. That's a good question because um, <laughs> I think I think the theme is, and maybe we, you know, as we are learning more, that might be inaccurate. But the theme is that affordability is not mandatory. We want more affordable housing. Now, maybe UAP is we might have to re uh, uh, word that. But I mean, I, and I think Chris was very good on that point that. We're giving up something and we're not getting anything back. So we're giving, you know, people are getting 20% more if they are. Well, we want them to have to put the affordable housing somewhere. And I mean, UAP, they took, you know, we had mandatory inclusionary yeah. housing. So they took out the word mandatory. But this, Connor can correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think this replaces mandatory inclusionary housing. This replaces voluntary. So the MIH is going to be the same. But it's still voluntary. The same. Yeah. You know, that's the problem. EIH, yeah. you want to make that the UAP required. Required of what? So, I mean, I think, I think, like, right now it's, if you want the extra floor area, it has to be affordable. Right? Right. That's the give and take. I guess if you were to say, I want UAP to be mandatory, that would mean everyone like you're just the way the mandatory inclusion of housing works, you're at that higher FAR and you have to build it affordable. So it's like the way MIH, MIH also has a zoning uh, FAR bonus and an up zone. There's like the ever zone, like the re up zoning and the FAR bonus from 10 to 12 in like an R10. And this is saying basically, okay, yeah, it's the same thing. It's like basically an R R10 becomes 10 FAR to 12 and it has to be affordable. I think I like I didn't write this, but like it, that's how you would make UAP of uh, mandatory is just everyone gets the twenty percent increase, and it's basically just forcing them to opt in. Mandatory, the increase is mandatory, and it's like you can build whatever you want on the site, but you have to include twenty percent affordable housing. Right, and so like so I think it, that is the idea that that effectively means there's no more as of right development. Yeah, so I think the thing is, if you were to, if your proposal is to keep UAP the same, but just make it mandatory, that would essentially mean that, yeah, like, I think you do want more nuance than that, because that basically is requiring 20% affordable housing on every residential site in the city, except for like R1 through 3 or whatever. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think that that's like a huge difference from what is what is proposed now. And so like there's things in the middle, right? There's there's other comments you can provide to UAP, but I would like like mandatory UAP as written is like a mass, it's basically just like mapping MIH everywhere. It's like essentially- well, I think it's a very good question. Okay, and I think I'm it wrong. comes from a place where we're still learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. And I think it's a good question, but our point is, why isn't affordable, you know, more, affordable housing in this topic. Yeah, I, well, I guess, so that brings me to my comment. And I think like the UAP is, the, it's a, it's like, hey, you can get more affordable units. It's, a, it's access to affordable units. And that's a good thing that our committee and board generally like. So I think to me, it makes sense to endorse it. But I guess my, my comment as a member of the board is that I would love 
for us, and I know this has come up in previous meetings with this, I would love for us to take a position on everything, ideally an affirmative position on the things that currently the resolution says we are not going to weigh in on. And that is because I think it's an opportunity for us to express the values we say we have about supporting housing creation in general, especially if this is a citywide problem that needs a citywide approach. I think it behooves us, I think we have a right and a responsibility to say that if we don't have an objection to something, that we support it. Because a lot of the people in our district are renters who are part of a citywide rental market and the things that happen in other community districts impact the rental market that they are a part of. So that that's my desire that I will leave there. Yeah, thank you. And you've said that before. Yes. We understand. <laughs> Great. And um, yes. Also just say like for the bits on, like we're trying to figure out how to respond to UAP still, like, and that's something we'll share with you guys. Is I love like, it. Is like, okay, so like if we want, because our critique is like, aside from UAP, this doesn't address mandated affordability yeah. at all. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't make MIA, MIH better. It adjusts the FARs a little bit in MIH to equate to UAP, but it's like everyone has so many, like the, it doesn't talk about mandated affordability. Yeah, right. And I'm not saying that UAP should be mandated, but like that's something that we could, that this is an opportunity to expand on as a policy in the city because this is all about and and just th that's a really very important point because MIH only applies to one area within CB2. Mm -hmm. And so the UAP is a way to bring in affordable housing throughout areas that have already been or or, mm -hmm. or aren't did not post or from when MIH was introduced, right? Yeah. Which so for many parts of the city there aren't any affordability mm -hmm. and, and minimal BIH, right? Yeah. So this adds that in significant across the whole Yeah, it just expands yeah, and that's BIH important. and aligns it more with the terms of MIH. Like the averaging income averaging, 60% M M A AMI average. Uh, like 20% of unit because before like VIH sucks like it's this like really complicated gymnastics of calculating like how much market floor you have and then a multiple like you multiply that by how much affordable you have or whatever it's like it's really stupid it's like depends on if you preserve versus you create new units so I, I agree I think that's a good thing to clean up but you can do like this is your opportunity to op like opine on affordable housing policy in the zoning so like you might as well like throw your comments in. And, and I think that the other aspect of, that George had pointed out to us is that UAP is not likely to be used in many areas because of the development types, which were the condos, and that the only way to kind of separate them is by building a building next door, yeah. right? To take the rental out of the condo. condo. And that is highly unlikely to happen in majority because of our built environment and because of the value of our land yeah. we're not just the value but the built environment yeah it's because no space no space right yeah but it just feels like for us we're very unlikely to get more affordable housing from this plan you know and that's you know that's a loss other areas will get a lot but it doesn't um create much opportunity for us yeah but, and I, and that's a theme that we've really seen. Well, said. now I just do want to ask the committee one question, and that is, if Zara doesn't come back, what do we want to do? Or we don't get the extension that Chelsea alluded to? Do we want to just say they should be better neighbors? Or I, I could rough out a little resolution saying they should be better neighbors. Uh, do you we know. have any feedback from anybody other than Pete? Pete spoke to people on his, his feedback from other people. Yeah, he, okay. he, he was, rep, uh, what is his group? Broadway Residence Gallery. Yeah, Lori yeah. has her hand up behind you, Valerie. Oh. Oh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Okay, can you, 
can we, I don't, it thank says, you. It says, hi, I all recognize you all are in business sessions. So putting this in the chat, I have mentioned this to Mark, but I want to reiterate here that we at DCP want to work through any questions or concerns you all have. I highly encourage you to send these questions to us so that I can get you a response from John M and the zoning team. Thank you, Chelsea. Um, Does that mean they're coming or not? Well, oh, that's <laughs> that was that was previous. That was previous. Oh, that was okay. I mean, we can obviously invite her on the twenty fourth if we have. No, I'm talking about the uh, Sarah. Oh, 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 on. Forget yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're having two, yeah, we're having two two tracks. Turn the page. Okay, so I, I'll I'll rough something out and and if we need it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's for Oh, oh yeah. Can, well. can you just tell me your name again? Eddie Siegel. Siegel. I thought it was Siegel. Right. Yeah. So you don't spell no, there's, it. No, there's two of us, but different. Yeah, different spellings from three to three. Yeah. Uh, on the on the ADU section, um, uh, the, you know, there's the comment also, as you've expressed, expansions would not produce affordable housing, but an ADU is typically like a single unit. So I don't know what that feedback would look like beyond sort of mandating 100% affordability on ADUs or 50% if there's two units. Yeah, well, I don't know that there is an answer to it. We're just pointing out that it's not I mean, it's, our yeah. affordable housing, oh, creating more housing. I don't right. think there's an answer. Uh, did you? That, have that's why I, I really, like, I do think it is restricted to the low density because like, why would someone want to add one unit in the backyard of like a 20 to 30 unit build? Like, no, I think it's we're really talking targeted. about our brownstone that has mm -hmm. these gardens and some of them yeah. have carriage houses today mm -hmm. and people live in them. Like the parents live in the front. I know one of those who the parents live in the front and the kids live mm -hmm. in the back. Mm -hmm. It's not unusual. It's not yeah, crazy. Yeah. Unusual. yeah, no, we'll, so, we'll try to get there. Okay. Okay. There are not too many left, but there are some. And people yeah. might put them in. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, so we'll work of course. <laughs> Jill's I said before, which I have, but I just want to emphasize, you know, we care about affordable housing, but we also care about housing affordability. And I think we have to acknowledge as a board that there is a supply shortage of housing generally. And so if we support things that create more housing period like ADUs where there isn't naturally a affordability mandate option that is still good for housing affordability. Uh, and, and, and that comment does not uh, we're gonna I'm gonna yeah, do great. this. Great. So I would love but I think the I think I don't know that the resolution I'm not sure everybody is, agrees. So because that's what our point is is that it's not just building more housing, it's affordability because that's what we were told you're an outlier, your community doesn't matter, you can just build luxury housing here and it doesn't matter. And our point is no, if there is additional building, which nobody is opposed to, that it should have a cross section, different type of housing in it. Different kinds of uh, yeah. people, not uh, you know uh, affordable and not. Right. No one is opposed to the principle of more housing. But we just don't want to be overrun as we already are with more luxury. We want to uh, a more different. I, I guess I, I'll, I'll say it back. I'll say my comments are bolder and they can be on better. We want to be intentional, oh, particularly luxury condos and co-ops. We're not even going to get luxury rentals. You know, so yeah, that's a problem. Our area, yeah, we. I don't know how to speak. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm well, more isn't better all the time. There's some things it'd just be good to be be intentional about what we are looking for or take advantage of, rather. Yeah. Well, we know, you know, on our Greenwich Village, we lost apartments, both affordable and luxury. Yeah. We have four in a building, and now it's one mansion. Right. So, and the loss of those units is bad. And the loss is rampant. That's what's going to happen. And, and, and that but fits. the implication of that is also that the creation of more units like that would be good. They won't come back that way, though. I, 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 I go with what. Anyway, that'd be all right, but I think, Hunter, there's no limit on how big. But I appreciate. It. I mean, I think that's an interesting. 
All of, is there a, do I hear a motion to adjourn? A motion to adjourn? Yes, I second that. <laughs> I think to cover this before, but I want to make sure that it's clear. We can have a resolution that supports some things, uh, you know, goes through the laundry list and says yes, it's done a no to others and conditions and so forth. But when we enter our result on the land use portal, it will ask for an overall yes. yes, no. We did talk about this, yes. right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. So, you know, teach and reteach, that's fine. Say again. Teach and reteach. As, as a teacher, you always have to say your point more than once to a group. Which my son refers to as Captain Obvious when he's talking about his father. But anyway. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> word. Mark, here's the. Can you want to, uh, uh, as Chris said, you have to contact people seven times in different ways to think they're even going to know you contact All right, them. and oh. Zara, I just want to make sure, because I know my lovely friend Frederica's going to call me like immediately when I walk out of here, and I don't know what to tell her. She wants to know if we are writing yeah. a rent so, so I So I think that we should take a, a provisional vote, oh. but I would like them to come back. Yeah, so I mean, but I'm not so sure I last time. without their presentation. Yeah. And yeah. and and that's right. that's what it is. But I'd like them to come back. But if they don't want to talk to us, I mean, what is that? That's that all right there. Yeah. yeah. Because they they you know care so much. So, yeah. so, so to make, make the motion. Yes. Make it I well just put in guys. Yeah, we're we're, we're having not done yet. We haven't adjourned. Um, so for. The motion is that on for Zara is that the that we have a provisional recommendation provided they don't come back. If they excuse me, not provided if they don't come back, but we don't have the Senate if they do come back, and I think that we should vote against it um, because we don't understand it what they're asking well, for as part of it. I'll let Anita can add on to that. I think he's got it. I, so if they if they don't come back, uh, it's a deny. Right. Yeah. I, Just like any because we don't. Any, you know, if they don't come, how do you? I need a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Acu uh, um, abstentions, recusal. I almost said accusal. <laughs> <laughs> Motion passes unanimously. What is this? Okay, we're adjourned. Yeah, we are. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thanks, Katie. Uh, thank you for coming you. and staying and being such a nice to you. Yeah. I, is that a good sign that we're seeing you? Oh, it's a good sign for today. We take that. Yeah, yeah we, take a, we take a day at a time. Oh, any passes? Uh, and it doesn't just why block was parked in a parking garage where the hood was um, at one of these uh, parking garages uh, like this. I don't know what it could be, but nothing could hit it. Uh, the council member is like, right, so I, yeah. It's like 